Hello and good evening. My name is Rob, aka Lantern Noir, and I have just discovered that you can actually change your name on Twitter to be whatever you want it to be, not your actual Twitter Twitter handle. That was a big deal for me today. Um, either way, I am here with this amazing group of players because we're going to play some D&D tonight. We are continuing the story of the Convergence, uh, where they are on a mission, if they choose to accept it, to save the multiverse. Um... We'll see if they accept it or not, because they seem to be distracted by anything shiny or cute. So, uh, that's where that goes. And no one has the right to look offended to that. I'm just going to put that thought there. And I... Yep, she does look different. Uh, which means that goes there, and that goes there, and now she looks like she should. So, and Pond, you don't have to keep... Is that... You don't need to subscribe. I'm just happy to have you here. There's some good emotes in there. <laughs> there, that's true. There is literally you. So, yeah, you you got me for life with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, we should go around the table, and give our our standard introductions, um, who we are, who we're playing, and which character from Encanto is this character most like. Because let's face it. Either for all of the amazing archetypes or all of the individual trauma, we can connect with at least one of those people. Example, try being a high school teacher and not relating directly to the song Under Pressure. Just saying. So, anywho, we're going to start with, uh, I think th there was a lot of shock at that. So we're actually going to go around starting with Nightlight Night. Light Night. All right. Well, hello. My name is Nightlight Night, or NLK. You can find me here on Twitch, uh, which we just actually started Final Fantasy VII for the very first time. It's my very first Final Fantasy game. Very excited. Um, but tonight, I am going to be playing Katazar or Katie, the half-orc cl forge cleric. Um, and I think that it kind of goes without saying that she's kind of Louisa. I'm just saying <laughs> I think there's no question. She is Louisa or uh, I was trying to think of. No, she's really just kind of Louisa with the feeling, the pressure. Apparently, she's the leader of this group. I don't know how I feel, but like, I think she would never say that she was the leader of the group. But yeah. Yet somehow. Yet somehow. OK, and we'll slide over to Tiffany. I'm Tiffany, or TS, and I am playing Sib tonight, your human ranger, and I'm going to make this really simple, and people are going to go, <gasps> I have never seen a canto yet. I have not had a chance to see it. I've been trying for like three weeks. <laughs> no chance. So Saturday night, after our game of Candle Keep, join us in Discord as we're going to have an Encanto watch party. I have to fix my dryer. Join us Sunday afternoon as in our Discord because we're going to be having an Encanto watch party. And I'm going to mute Tiffany while we go up to that other pond. Hi, everyone. I'm that other pond. You can find me streaming at that other pond where I am just bulk playing Fire Emblem Three Houses. I will eventually open these Pokemon cards as well because I finally got some. Um, and I also think uh, not to... It's a it's the tough lady thing, but it's not just the muscles, but Louisa for sure, because uh, Aveline is very much like a strong on the outside, very soft and needy on the inside, but it doesn't really want to admit it. So That's fair. Do we have a trifecta, Molly? What that you think? I'm going to I have Louisa? no idea what's going to happen. I'm just saying I was immediately going to say Bruno. <laughs> We'll start start at the top. <laughs> okay, all right. I am barely Molly. Um, I play Samantha Metal, who's a gnome artificer with JB, the steel defender. Um, and if Sam was a character from Encanto, I, I feel like... I, yeah, JB is Louisa, for sure. For sure, JB is Louisa. But I feel like Sam is either like Bruno or the the not the youngest like nephew or cousin the boy the older one was his name like Camillo yes I feel like also maybe Camillo perhaps yeah. 
meaning well, but like likes to get into trouble. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, um, and that, I will, that feels like it fits. I will make the plug. Um, Encanto is one of my favorite Disney films uh, that has come out just because it does such a neat job. And having followed, we were talking before we came on, it got in my brain because everyone was talking about their favorite TikToks. And there's a lot of really interesting um, TikToks from uh, Latinx uh, content creators talking about their family history and that can, they, the overlap they feel seeing themselves in that movie. So it was kind of in my brain as, as some interesting archetypes. I also read some amazing, psycho- heard psychologists give TikToks um, related to like the child archetypes that are shown in it. And a lot of, that's kind of like they did after um, Inside Out. There was a lot of talk about that kind of things. So, so that's where that's at. And then I'm Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir. I am the Dungeon Guide. I play everybody that's not one of these four amazing people. And, uh, and that makes it really fun. Uh, let's see. From a housekeeping point of view, um, if you want to be part of the game tonight, you're more than welcome to. If you're here with us on Twitch, uh, we have the re-rolls, to which I have to thank Wooly Nelson for throwing a few, uh, a few biddies into the Book of Fate. So that is one way. Um, every so often, there'll be a thing that'll pop by. Our exclamation point loot will take you to the stream loots page, and you can. Um, there's a code there to get a free pack of cards to get you started, and those cards will also affect the outcome of the game. They can be anything from allowing a reroll to forcing maximum damage. So, and that applies to both the players and the enemies. So, for example, if it's an epic card that lets the players do maximum damage, there is a matching legendary card that lets the monster do maximum damage. So, kind of a fun thing to get everyone a little more involved if you are so inclined. Um, and somebody let me know in chat if, if it, the coupon no longer works so that I can make more. Um, but I would love all of the people that hang out with us to have a chance to get their hands on those to get started with it. Uh, I also want to thank, before we get too far down the road... Everyone on this list, um, thank you, Shadow, for that, uh, as he sends love, for helping get us to where we were when we started off this season and helping create all the amazing artwork we have, all the amazing theme music we have, um, helping get all of the cast photos taken care of and out to everybody. If your name is up here, we owe this entire stream to you first. And Big Bear, you're here just in time as we're kind of like getting into the... uh, the previously on stage of our opening. Uh, Let's see, let me push that out of the way. So let's see, plot so far. Uh, Aveline came through a convergence vent, met up with everybody, you killed a spider, you got a a glowing rock, you weren't sure what to do with it, but then you got attacked, so you left town. You almost got murdered by gnolls. You found out that a bunch of people that wanted the magic rock also got murdered by gnolls, and they wanted to murder you to get the magic rock back. So you handed the magic rock to Sam's brother, a heretofore unnamed, unidentified, and currently no, without a... it's sp- Sean. We sent it to Sean. You're right, to Sean. He's named. He is still, though, heretofore not ha- owning a stat block in the campaign book. Which means he could be a 15th level ranger. He could be a one commoner. We don't know, but we entrusted him with a major MacGuffin of the entire game. Then we went off. We met a gnome with serious attitude issues um, who can save the multiverse if this band of intrepid adventurers is able to get him a simple little bit of device that might still actually work. Um, All they have to do is travel for several days to the Arbor of Anne, find it in a ruined scholarship building, and bring it back. And then they'll punch an infinitely small hole through the magic rock and hopefully save the universe. That's assuming, of course, that Sam is wrong and that punching an infinitely small hole in something doesn't start a chain reaction, which ends life as you know it throughout the galaxy. It's that classic what could go wrong scenario. Uh, On their way to the Arbor of Anne, they were briefly sidetracked by a... um, a little bit of an opportunity to do some good in the world and confront a Warforge cleric to stop their efforts to raise an army to destroy the Empire that had arrived in its own convergence event. And deciding that while everyone in the group really hates the Empire on principle, 
they weren't willing to bring in an evil forge god to accomplish the ends of bringing the empire down. There are indeed some bridges these four will not cross. I will call myself slightly surprised. But, I'm just saying, you know, there's a certain rebel attitude in this group. There's a massive rebel attitude in this group. <laughs> so that gets us to, we left last session, we actually ended on a shockingly neat bow tie around that, uh, that particular side quest. I think it's the first time in 14 sessions I didn't say, and we'll find out what happens next week. We just kind of got to the end and all went, oh, I need a cigarette. Let's meet up next week. Uh, are there any uh, amendments to the these? <laughs> okay, slight side note. Uh, if you bring up angels, you should remember something. When God wants somebody eradicated from existence, he sends angels. Seeing an angel, not always a good thing. Just saying. Anyway, are there any offers of amendments to the minutes thus proffered? We leveled up. That's right, yes. we did. Okay. Yes. So let's, before we really get into things, let's update that. I, I It was on my to-do list tonight. I just totally about it. Um, <laughs> um, so, Aveline, new hit point total is? 40. <laughs> hey. Okay. Incredible. So you can take a couple of hits now. Goal. She grew one tooth back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got 13 teeth is, now. Is JB still sitting on 15? Uh oh my god, I did, I did not even think okay. of JB. I'm so sorry. No let problem. Me, I'll come back to you. Yep. It's it's like I do in class. You finish your homework, I'll check on somebody else. Um Somebody else being Sib. Where's she at, Tiffany? I think she's at 36 now. I think I have to, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and, and okay, Katie is at... So, remind me. So, I have 4d8, but I couldn't... Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. It's fine. See, she's back. Sorry. Oh, no. Did I drop? No, you just froze for a few seconds. I, we assumed uh -oh. you were in deep thought. Okay. Uh, That's what I assumed. Well, no, I'll double check that. I hope not. We'll, we'll... But anyway, what I was saying is that um, I can't um, I can't fix it. I know what the dice are. Do I just need to roll that? Oh, it does it automatically. It should be max. So it shows, um, shows you at 31. That seems okay. right. Does it? Okay. Yep. 20, 24 goes up to 31. That seems reasonable for a cleric. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you're good. Okay. Now we get to Sam, the last of the housekeeping. What's Sam land at? I'm at 31 hit points now. And also my feet does say um, gumball expert, but it's what we talked about. I just changed the name of it. Yep. Okay. And then does JB's hit points change with your new level? Um, I'm checking. It says that the Steel Defender's hit points are his constitution plus my intelligence plus five times your level in this class. So he gets five more hit points. Right. Because you went so up a level, so. Yeah. So he was at 15, so he's at uh, 20 now? Nope. He should be higher than that. What's the equip formula again? Um, it, okay, let me, let me refind it. Um, it is his cons, his constitution modifier plus my intelligence modifier plus five times your level in this class. Okay, so you have a base 20 plus your int mod plus his con mod. Right, and his constitution modifier is a plus two regular, not the saving throw. Got it. And then your plus three from your int mod, he's, he is at 25. Oh, sweet. He's actually been below his his correct number of hit points for a while. Yeah, I didn't realize I was doing the math wrong. That's okay. He still kicked butt, took names, and was sneakier than Aveline. <laughs> oh. 
I mean, it's it, it happened. <laughs> I didn't make decks my dump staff. Stat. That's all there is to it. I do have combat encounters planned, so if getting you all into a, into a scrappy mood is not a bad thing. Just saying. <sighs> okay. Other amendments to the uh, minutes as 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 now amended. Okay, we have a game to start. We are warriors to the very end. We must stay strong. Together we will win. In the universe there is darkness. Darkness. Danger lurks out there. Tries to get us, it's everywhere. We are powerful, beside you we will stand. We are warriors till the very end. Together we will win. Convergence. So, picking up from where we left off, you have resumed your journey towards the Arbor of Anne. Uh, the next day's travel is going to be relatively uneventful, unless somebody wants to make a real point of doing something eventful, which I will always leave open for you to say, I need to do something eventful, but you better give me an idea of what that eventful thing is. Because there's an event down the road. I'm taking the silence as, please, tell us what the event is. I'm cool with that. Um, it's getting later in, you know, it's, it's, it's an autumn day, the trees are still that bright orange and brown with little patches of green here and there, especially on the larger ones that seem to really be holding out for just the right moment to change. Uh, the road itself is mostly covered in fallen leaves, giving you that, that steady crunch with every step as you make your way along. Um, it's a long hike, but at least you have a beautiful view while you do it. Um, uh, about earlier, about mid morning, you, um, can hear something up the road, up the, tr uh, past you, um, that sounds very much like, uh, a panicked group arguing about the best way to, to get a particular thing moving. And there's some back and forth about, you know, well, the horse isn't going to be able to pull through that. I can't care what the horse is. And you hear some other noise you can't make out. I'm an actor, damn it. Not a teamster. I haven't ever played a teamster on the stage. And then kind of back to the noise and such. Question? Yeah? Do I recognize that voice? The actor's voice? Vaguely. Like during emotional trauma and stuff happening in my life and running away? Possibly. I'd like to go check that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> you make your way down the road a, a, a short distance further, and you can spot um, a wagon has become mired in the mud where the road just kind of like collapses down. Um, a very... Well, it's hard to say whether he <laughs> whether he is a bored or annoyed horse is is also kind of like padding at the mud as several people are trying to get the wagon unstuck. It doesn't take too terribly long for you to recognize one of them 
as a, a gentleman with a very thick black beard. Um, he's added a cap you didn't recognize before, a wide-brimmed hat with a red rim on it. Um, and he seems mostly to be kibitzing as the others are attempting to, to coax the horse into trying again at getting going. If you linger long enough, um, one of them will eventually shout, we just need to get moving before they come back. In Who's the they? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam just walks to the front of the group. Hi. I mean, I think I'm on JB. But <laughs> and I'm just like shouting down at them like, whoa. Do you know them, Sam? Nope. Oh. I might know that man. Could, should we help them at the very least? I'd like to get a closer look. As long as uh -huh. they don't want a toll, then... <laughs> cool. Because we still have gotten no money. That's true. <laughs> As, as you're doing this, you hear this roar in the distance back north and westish from where you've been traveling. And there's a moment where you vaguely remember those massive trees that appeared with that convergence event and a very similar sound at the same time. I said, Fukon to go check it out. The roar? Yeah. Dinosaurs? Okay. <clears throat> I got a dinosaur. I said to check out the other dinosaurs. I don't know. Seems like a good idea. I have time. just a very quick question for you. Do you have like some kind of like see through his eyes spell or other? No, such... I keep hoping that somehow it's gonna. Okay. Happen. Did Did you add language Tyrannodon? Is that an option that I no. missed somehow? Yeah. No, I okay. don't. So you're sending him to look, and your plan for finding out what he finds is... It doesn't really, she'll ask him, blink once, if you... Are there other dinosaurs? He'll probably go, uh -huh. <clears throat> Okay. All right. I'm still new to this Beastmaster thing. Okay. Fukan, go see what that is. Rawr! And he... Um, and as... you know he's going to come back. Probably. He has before. That's true. But there haven't been dinosaurs before, so... Ah, also God. true. What if he like finds a, a nice lady pteranodon and he never comes back? Or what if he gets attacked and we don't know and never comes back? You're, I, I can go get I'm him? Sure, I'm I, sure he will be I, fine. I'm sure be, he will be fine. No, I'm really worried. <laughs> I mean, he's a very smart dinosaur for okay. a dinosaur. Sam, do you think we could make a a beacon on on him, so like a, so that we could track his movements or or something? Um, is there any way to do that? Actually, could could we make it so we can interpret his thoughts? Do you know, like a dog collar? Just say something. It goes woof. I don't care. I'll get to work is on that. that. Collars on dogs work. Not I, all I of them. Know. Only Wait, the good was, ones. You can understand what dogs say. There was a story a long time say. ago. There was something about an inventor who made a color that a dog said that the wolf, and then he could understand it, but it was nonsense. I don't know. Maybe I'm making it up. I, I mean, druids have speak with the animal. If you created an object that could cast it, and the object could cast it, and then you affix the object to the animal's neck, It's like the same thing, right? I didn't understand any of those words. Right. I don't know. think about it. Anyway, my, my cat <laughs> found the green screen. Um, I think me and JB are going to go over and try to see what's up with the wagon cuz yes. I'm going to solve the gonna follow. Too, yeah. <laughs> the, the easy thing first, but I am writing in my notebook about this collar cuz this is interesting. <laughs> As you get closer, you can see um, that there are three people gathered around it. Um, one of them, the gentleman with the hat and the bushy beard, who's like pointing. Well, you you might consider, I think, 
I'm not that familiar with horses, you see. I'm more of a whack. Well, I'm just not that familiar with exactly how we're going to get out of this. Perhaps we, we need leverage should do the trick. Um, I was in this fascinating production of, of Sisyphus. And no, that wasn't the name of the show. Katie's going to come at and just lift the wagon. Where do you need this? I'm going to need Katie to roll me a strength check. <laughs> And okay. JB offers the help action okay. by holding it from the other side so it looks like Katie did it all by herself. Sure. <laughs> well, that's getting rolled. Now that I see him, do I recognize him? Okay. Oh, yeah. 15. Okay. Oh, so 15. 15. But with advantage from JB? I did. I rolled the exact oh, okay. same thing. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, let me wake that back up again. There it is. It didn't come through on my end, so now I see it. Um, it is really, really stuck. I mean, it is ground. Like you start to lift, and it's like as it kind of you start to get it out, but it's going to take a bit of like rocking it and lifting it and rocking it. Aveline, <laughs> can you come help? Oh yes, and sorry, I yes, and she goes right ahead. And- as, as Aveline too. comes up around I'll come JB, over and help too, yeah. um, the, the man in the beer goes, by the stars. No, it's the good captain. Hi. You survived. Is this surviving? I don't know. Oh, let me let me pick this up. I need to I need to lift something heavy real quick. To You're a captain. Think. You never yeah. told us you were a captain. Oh, I think she may have actually been a full-on general. I just don't recall the exact rank she had achieved at last we had met. So I, I defaulted. I was a general, yeah. <clears throat> you were a general? What is the proper way to address a General Aveline? Oh, I don't go by proper names. That's I believe, too long. at least in the experiences, that simply a ma'am or sir is appropriate when you're not talking no, no, royalty. No. Now, it's oh. possible if she had been commissioned into her general status by a royal army, then it might be sir or lady general. Is he on the wagon or is he off the wagon? He's off. Oh, okay. He, sir Lady Aveline, do you need help with the wagon, Sir Lady? I do like the Sir Lady. That's that's kind <laughs> of fun. Yeah. Um, well, let's move this. Uh, I I need to talk to you. That's absolutely so much to catch up on. I have seen so many fascinating sights since arriving. Are there other? Well, you were doing the thing. Did you? Oh. You were doing the thing. I should I should not distract your company from doing the thing and then my company can get underway well not my company the people i am in company with and okay one, yep. one of the women that's there kindly is, if you know him can he go with you no i don't know him that well i see this life i'm kind of regretting it hmm. you to say you know him too well all right well sir lady can you help me <laughs> let's move this cart we all roll strength Again? Um yeah, go for it. With advantage or just straight? Just straight. Okay. We'll see how many successes we get towards getting this thing unstuck. <laughs> As everyone throws themselves into it. 13, 7, 16. Oh, can I roll a strength for JB? Yeah. Okay. You got Come on, JB. We're not doing great. Um plus two for his strength. Okay. It moves and then just sort of sinks back down into more mud again. But you moved it. As it sinks down, you hear this cry in the distance. It's not that different than Fukan's call, but it's a lot deeper. It resonates a lot more. Probably not good. And then you hear Fukan's. And you recognize that sound. That's the, oh, dear Lord, ear, oh, dear Lord, it's going to kill me, oh, dear Lord sound. It, are, are they in mud? Is that what this is? Right. Can I... 
do they have it like do you i'm gonna go do you guys have like like sacks with food or so i we need to put something under the wheels for friction to help it out of the mud what about some twigs or branches or something well, it needs to be like flat. I was gonna say a car mat, which they do exist in this world. Yeah, they do. Like, um, um, do we have any car mats? If we lift it high enough, because we're trying to lift and move it, essentially. If we just lift it, can you use your little freezer um, to make the ground more solid? Oh, this is brilliant. Yes, right? I can, I can ray of frost the ground, right? Sure. Will it freeze the mud? I mean, then we have our own set of problems, but at least we got it moving. <laughs> sure. As you okay. as you get in a position, you notice that the other two people that have that are traveling and they're wearing kind of like a basic, um, just traveling clothes, leather jacket, um, but they both have an armband that has the sideways eight on it with an exploding star in the middle. A set, like an infinity symbol? Sideways eight? Yes. Okay. And there's like a starburst in the center of it. Okay. And they both look at each other and they look up to where that sound came from and they're both like, we need to get out of here. We need to hide. Then do right, you we're getting the wagon. I, I, we just get under something fast. Aren't we in the middle of an open field? Like <laughs> They're scrambling under the wagon. A couple of bushes? Yeah. Gonna... There, there does seem to be Ready to bow. <laughs> on the map. Is the map is the map where we are at right now? More or less. OK. Um, well, you guys are about to get really cold, and I'm going to cast Ray of Frost on the mud <laughs> try to get this wagon going. <laughs> As you line up your shot, you hear this high-pitched sound of just... It, there's really not a good way to describe it. It just starts as a really... And you look up and you see what you first think is Fukan streaking out of the clouds down at your position. Except Fukan shouldn't get that big. It swoops down... And you have enough time to see that where the wings are aren't claws, but full articulated hands. It grabs onto one of the two people you've that were scrambling under the wagon, grabs into his shoulders, and then just takes off again. Can, can I, uh, wait a minute. Yep. Can, can JB grab the guy? Absolutely. Give me a dex check. Oh, oh. Oh God, please roll high. A 10. Don't rip his arms off. He reaches for the person and just misses. <sighs> well, Can I, I tried. Take a shot with the bow. Um, as you pull out your bow to, to take your shot, you look and there's a group of them racing towards you in a tight formation. Roll me initiative. Yeah, kind of cute. Also, question: Have we had a long rest since our? Yes. Thing? Okay. I, I rolled. Oh, thank you. I had not done that yet. <laughs> Same. Yes. You can push the long rest button before this happens. Thank you. <laughs> we'll put you guys at the back of the wagon. We'll put JB over there. <laughs> As the guys flying off with our troop friend i'm gonna slide into his dms and go if he drops you remember relax your body <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be tense when you hit the ground from that high up <laughs> sam came, coming in clutch with the uh the advice there it's it's a fact and you know it could be life-saving it could be and then we'll put Harrison over there. We'll put the, this one scrambling under. We've got one more flying away over this way. And let's see how we did. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me throw these guys on the map. On the board. Um, what are they? Oh, they're these things. One, two, three, four. 
and bing. All right, there we go. The NP Goose and Maverick. Maybe. Okay, so Aveline comes in at 10. JB comes in with Sam at 9. No, yes, 9. Uh, no, that was Katie. Katie, 5. Have you ever broken 10 on an initiative roll? Hey, hey you know what? I think I did once. <clears throat> I just realized, too, because I'm reading over my notes of the scene. Aveline, you came across him at a broken down wagon the first time you met him. Her brain is hurting a lot right now. <laughs> That's why she's like, she's just like. Okay, so that's right about where everybody's standing when this all, when you first notice them. Um, Let's see. Refreshing that for everybody to see and switching to combat mode. Bing. As the first one swoops down on you, you realize that their full size is somewhere around the length of seven feet. They they would tower over Katie if they land. Um, three is going to make uh, an effort to take away Sam. So he's just going to dive in and make his attacks. Um, deflect attack. Which does? Disadvantage. On the... Defender imposes disadvantage on the attack roll. Okay. Okay. JB jumps to action, swats it away, and it's going to fly up over there. Thank you, JB. Having missed its mark, Sib has is now has the chance to get involved. Uh, I'm do Hunter's mark, uh, the one with the guy, uh, the one uh, trying to get Sam. But I think I was aiming at the one with the guy already, so I'm going to hit that one. Okay. Uh, that's reasonable. He's marked. And make your attack. 24. Ooh, that'll hit. So, 7 damage plus your mark damage. 11. 11, that's enough. Let me roll a con. Okay. Interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Splat. And he drops the person he's carrying. Let's get Fukan's around there to catch him, is it? Fukan is, work, is working his way back. Okay. We're going to let... Actually, Fukan's there. Um, Fukan is probably not big enough to catch him. Maybe he can go kind of help try and slow his fall. I don't know. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Let's see if he can kind of help, like... I don't glide know, like down. a volleyball, like you know, like glide a down. Glide down with them. <laughs> yeah. That's that's possible. It's either that or going beside going, you're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, actually. Remember to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Fukan like swoops in right underneath him and grabs on with his claws and then pops his wings out wide and kind of <laughs> air breaks. And they kind of glide down together and drops the person off. That works. Dino Parachute. Yes. Uh, number one is going to take a diving run then at Sib. Um, it's going to move its full movement for that. So that covered that. That covered that. It's going to make its attack. So one, two, three. Um, against... So that's two hits. I'd like For... to intercept one of those hits. Which lets you reduce it? Yes, to 1d10 plus 2. Okay. Roll it. Does Hunter's Mark help with that as well? Hunter's Mark lets you damage one of them. Oh, that's me damage that's right. Uh, so reduced by 5. Oh, thank you. oh so Sib only takes thank 6 you. damage. Ah. 
between the two attacks. That worked out pretty good. Unfortunately, um, as this happens, actually, wait a second. What did you use? Intercept or interception. Okay. Um, so you see this thing coming down and it's, it, it, as you look at it, it, for a second, you think you're seeing a ballista bolt coming at you that everything about it is the right speed style shape pointedness and there's a moment that you're like you can feel yourself tensing in terror from the attack and since you interceded you will bear the brunt of that particular effect the experience of seeing this thing streaking down leaves you shaken and you are frightened until the end of your next turn and did you say I took damage, or is it just I'm frightened? No, Sib takes the damage. You're just okay. frightened. Great. No problem. Uh, four is also going to do something. It got wounded, so it's going to circle back, and it's going to make a passing attempt at uh, Harrison, because he can. So, claw, claw, bite, which is a really fun thing to be able to do. Bing, bing, and that takes care of him. And that takes us to Aveline's actual action. Awesome. Is there anything I can try and do to shake being frightened, or is it just a, something that happens? It's just something that happens. Okay, that's fine. The um, bad news is you're at disadvantage for attack rolls right now. That's okay. Um, I'd like to use my, get my great sword out and try and, like, step around and get to number one here okay the scary one the, the scary one she's she thrives in danger <laughs> i forgot to do disadvantage uh Don't roll it again on. yeah it was worse nine yeah it's definitely you know you should have hit it but it's like that that fear is overtaking you and throwing off the attacks as it kind of backs up and just kind of slaps away at your blade with its claws. That's fine. It's a little, it's creepy and there's trauma involved. Yeah. That's fair. Is that it? Zokie doke. Um, yep, we'll do that. Boom. Ooh, I take it. Boom. Boom, boom. Um, the one that's attacking Harrison, which is number four, just took six damage. As you all hear this, bam, and this like crack of thunder, and the space between um, him and the uh, the guy are is just full of smoke at that crack. So, and Azteki, thank you for investing in all those cards. I appreciate that. The night is about to get very interesting. Please don't tell them what you opened. <laughs> Let them find out the hard way. <laughs> um, 80 cents! 80 cents is for fools, young lady! You just had to. Okay, so what's Sam doing? Who is no fool? And knows the value of 80 cents. Um, okay. Is it possible for me to, like, run, like, like do a V shape to get to Aveline without running, like, within range of number one? Like, can I spend 10 feet of movement to, like, get to the other side of Sib without... So you want to get between Sib and Frederick or Harrison without ever actually going through a target an attack of opportunity chance if i can <laughs> if not i will take the attack of opportunity but then i i will say i'm gonna do something and then dash under the wagon uh well you're currently in a threatened square right now anyway okay that's fine well then if i can move to where um next to aveline okay I, I will do that. Well, actually, you can just then, pass through Sib Square. Just go, just use yeah. the use the keyword "oop," and you yep. just sneak Oop. right by her. Oop! Excuse me. Oop. <laughs> um, and then I will cast. I'm gonna pat Aveline on the calf because I'm about that height. 
and uh, cast Heroism, which um, makes the creature immune to being frightened and gains temporary hit points equal to my spell casting modifier at the start of each of its turns, which is three. At the end of this, you lose all um, of the remaining temporary hit points, but at the start of every one of your levels, you get three temporary hit points. Um, so I'm gonna, oh, there you go, goodbye. And then I will I will take the attack of opportunity to dash under the wagon. I sp or you know what? I'll stay there. I will stay there because I think this thing's going to fly off anyway. And I'm going to yell to JB to heck him up. Get him, JB! Um, to which he <laughs> will run and try to punch this dinosaur in the mouth. Okay. So like right, right up next to Sib and try to punch him. Okay. Up side ahead. Good call, by the way, on the heroism. Um. Uh. It's a fourteen plus. Mm -hmm. Uh. Oh my god! I've forgotten absolutely everything. Um. A plus four, so an eighteen to hit. Eighteen will hit. Yes. Okay. One d eight plus two. <gasps> and eight, ten, ten points of damage. That's solid. That's I want to see some em. teeth fly. If dinosaurs have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely annoyed at, at whatever JB is. It's definitely not happy about that. Um, oh, heroism is a concentration as well. Okay. Slap that on there. So we know you're concentrating. Okay, and that then takes us to the last of them and their action. Uh, they are going to dive bomb Katie and come roaring down on her with that same screeching sound that just fills you with terror. Um, and then it's going to make its attack. Okay. Claw, claw, bite. Uh, why do I, why do I attack the armored one? <laughs> well, at least it's probably going to survive your counter attack. <laughs> As Katie's like completely terrified of this thing and that sound, it just, it, every bit of your being is feeling the need to run. Uh, fortunately, though, between your shield and your armor, you just, it's not gained through. It's just a, sh yeah, just as a like, huh! <laughs> yeah. It's and just claws tunk. and bays at you. Um, and that takes us around to the top of the combat round. So we're back up to number three's action. Uh, let's see. It's seeing what's going on. It's so going. Wait, do I not have a turn at all with being frightened? Oh, whoops. No, you do. Sorry. <laughs> it was like, oh. And it's funny. Now. I clicked next, and the, the system Absolutely went. got to go. <laughs> Katie's up, and it's like, I just totally, I'm sorry. Okay, and um, with Frightened, that's uh, disadvantage on attacks attack and rolls. Checks. Mm -hmm. Attacks and checks. Okay. Um, so for that, then, with it being right there, um, I am... I am going to cast uh, Toll the Dead on it. She's like, get away! And cast Toll the Dead, which is a wisdom save of 13. Wisdom save of 13. If that's not its strongest, roll some damage. All right. And that is going to be it's seven. Not, not a bad amount of damage. Um, and yeah, that'll be your turn. Okay. That loops us up to the top. Now number three is going to get involved and it's going to use its move, um, to go out and around and make another diving run at, um, Aveline. The good news is you're not frightened by it because there's heroism. I thought 
Aveline was the one who was frightened, but she I'm going to stick. No, you, I'm, yeah. She oh, was. It was me, and then Katie also got frightened. Got yes. it. Okay. Yeah. Both. Yeah, you, you did a good thing. You did a good thing. Plus, it's she's an obvious target, so it's going to try. And she's immune to being frightened by it, so it has that going for her. Um, it will come in with its its pair of claws and its its bite. Um, and only one's going to get in. So a whopping six. As it claws away at you. Easy peasy. How's Sib hand handling all of this action? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to... Not please. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take another sh Are they far enough away still to shoot? They're, they're just diving on me, right? So I'm going right, to take another they're, shot. They're on right on the top one. of you. Yeah, they're right there up close and pretty. Oh, okay. So I They've really should... swooped in to do their thing. Uh, I want to try and climb on one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I can find a way to... I don't know. Try and use the. So you're gonna grapple one. Yeah, I'm gonna grapple one. New horse, new horse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and also, well, okay. So I have a question. Oh dear. If I use the help action, uh, if I use the help action, I can help another player. Like I think Get... Evelyn. Did Evelyn just go? No, Evelyn goes next. By distracting them. Yes. You and can nothing advantage. will distract them so much as trying to climb on board one. All right, that works for me. You can use your okay. So you start to climb on one, which counts as your help action. You are officially yep. helping Aveline with it with her next melee attack. Cool. It's an, okay. What's Fukan up to? Uh, he is it's, gonna attack one. It is the dragon all over again. Yes, I, I concur. It worked pretty well that time. Did it, it? work again? Did it? Okay. I didn't actually get eaten, and neither did Aveline, so I'm going to go with a yes. Sib remembers it working very well. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so Fukan's back in this. Yeah. I think I need to... Yeah, I do. I need to actually get him on the board so we kind of know where he's at. I think he's going to come over there. What, what is Fukan doing? You tell me. I don't know why I I'm talking. I think he's going to try and kind of dive on one, kind of scare him off or startle him off. Which one would he like to go after? The one that's fighting Katie, the two that are that are double teaming Aveline, or the one that's fighting with the the bearded man. As he's by the bearded man, he'll probably take that one. Okay. Try and get it to go chase him. Okie dokie. Instead of the bearded guy. And there's that, and there's that, and there's that. Okay. That works. He does some pretty good damage to it. Um, the first one, though, is going to press its advantage against Aveline if it can. So it's going to just continue to try to batter through her defenses. Uh, ow. Uh, okay. Uh, this is not a great turn. For, 16. For me, I would like to use my parry so I can reduce the damage. <laughs> Okay, by how much? Uh, by my uh, superiority die roll plus two. I'd roll that. Okay, love it. Wow. Uh... Wait, and I, did you, I've had my turn, so that means that JB can do um, deflect attack to impose disadvantage yes. as well. Oh, okay. Let me re-roll one of those. Okay. Disadvantage was, it was taken. How much are we deflecting for the parry? Uh, it is, ooh, nine. Nine. Okay, so, so it's only 15 total then. It's fine. I got 13 D's. Lucky number 13. <laughs> really? I have you at 19. No, I, no. Oh. It's a running joke yeah. from... <laughs> the number of teeth is not <laughs> equate to my hit points. <laughs> got it. Fair enough. All right, and then four for his action is like really not happy with everything that's going on. It's going to just take off and get some, take a disengage action and get some altitude. And start to head back where they were coming from. Uh, 
Uh, which then takes us to Aveline's action. Hello. So because it's the top of my turn, I get three temporary get hit three points. Three temp. Yep. Cool. That is super Temp HP helpful. three. Noted. Yes. Um, and I would like to... Uh, so the one that Sib is on, I want to get it with my greatsword. Does that mean because she's helping it's with advantage? Yep. Okay. You have advantage for attack on number one. So dirty 20. Dirty 20, that'll hit. For 12 points of damage. Jeez. Um, does it look hurt? <laughs> That's number one, right? Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely got something going on. All right, and then I'm going to use my action surge to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, the advantage only works once, right? Uh, yes. She's still on him. <laughs> We're at the check. Ooh, never mind. Ooh. It's fine. Ooh. That could have gone better. Could've that could have gone better. Um, but you're still in pretty good shape. I... Cool. <laughs> no, we don't... You do. Okay, cool. I thought that said we do. I'm like, um... Uh, Harrison is going to uh, help get everybody under the wagon for his action, uh, which gets us to Sam. Um, Tell me about our gnome. The one that's flying away, he's like very hurt, right? Yes. Yeah, that okay, would be number I four. So, yeah. Oh, I mean number four. Sorry. Yep. Um, and I, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I know this, but if Hunter, if you kill the thing that has Hunter's mark, can you move it to something else, or is that hex? I can, but I think it has to be during my turn. But right. once he's dead, I can, I can set it up on the next round. Right. Right, but it doesn't cast like another thing to, like it's not another spell slot, right? Nope. Nope. Okay, then I'm going to. Um. Use my my first round of using um the gumball feature of Mr. Freezy that's new because it has a hundred, a range of one hundred. I'm going to try to get um number four out of the sky. <laughs> you turn the dot the dial to the third setting and just a stream of gumballs come flying out of it. Well, it's like I pull a quarter out of my pocket and I'm like. Whew! And then I like put it in the side and like crank a thing, um, which is a nineteen to hit. Okay. Twelve points of damage. Jeez. I am a gumball expert now, you guys. <laughs> and he's out of it. Yes. He's down. Incredible. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, the the gumballs come flying out and just yeah. I mean, unless you've attached like a scope or something to it with a hundred feet range, I see that as the like a, a a burst fire as opposed to a single crack. Oh yeah, it's like a stream of rainbow gumballs. Um, yeah, and then I'm just gonna rail uh, gun of yeah, gumballs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a big like I have like a handle on the top. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, but, you know a rail gun of, of a gumball. Well, that that boom. That would work, like a big jawbreaker style gumball. Yes, I love it. I'd buy a real okay. gun, indeed. And thank you for that, by the way, uh, <laughs> my my lady. We're glad to have you hanging out, and we try to have fun, um, even when we're getting our butts handed to us by a bunch of dinosaur people. Um, would I impose attack of opportunity to run under the wagon where I'm at? Uh, one would get a swipe at you if you try to disengage. Okay, I will stay there then and i'm gonna yell to jb to punch him again jb that worked really well so he's gonna punch um the same guy again okay i don't know what that is because it's under a bunch of oh even it's happening. an eight yeah it's yeah. not happening yeah jb kind of just flails in its general direction and it seems relatively unfazed he's like which one is the same one they all look the same <laughs> 
which takes us to two who is currently playing with Katie. Um, I think two two is gonna stay two is gonna see what he can do against Katie still. He's he's not convinced this is a, a thing he needs to run away from yet. And for good reason. I'll take that. Um, it's a, all of six damage to our cleric. All right. However, she is no longer frightened, so this is probably going to hurt. <laughs> um, well, she did have her shield up, mm -hmm. like, with the last one. So uh, for her bonus action, she is going to cast Searing Smite um, onto her Warhammer. Yikes. Um so let me cast that really quick. And then she is going to try to one-handed with her war hammer just come out, bad birdie, and just clonk him. Oh, oh. I'm just going to say it's been, people have been generous already tonight, and this is a pretty epic moment. I'm just going to put it there. Maybe there are some cards that could get played. But free rolls are so mean to me. <laughs> Do it. Maybe they're good tonight. Ugh. Do we want to try? We want to yes. try to bonk yeah. it? Okay. Okay. We All twist right. the fates. Bonk. We'll try to bonk. Oh, okay. Uh, 12. Not enough bonk. Uh, 12 is enough bonk. <gasps> enough bonk. That's All right. Bonk. All right, so then I will. That's three, but <laughs> let me do the searing. I swear, I need to like change my dice or something. Um, and then three, so six. six. That was a lot of work to get us to six damage. I'm just gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> but at the each the start of each of its turns, it has to make a Constitution saving throw, and takes damage on a failed one. So. He is smited. Guy smited in the face. He is smited. He smoked. Smoked. Indeed, smoked. Okay. You did get your turn. We're at the top of combat round three. Uh, speaking of which, number three, who has um, had a really kind of quiet time of things, is going to take off and put some distance between himself and all of you. Why I get to attack of opportunity? Oh, that's one of the, the interesting downsides to these things. Like pteranodons, they can come and go without provoking. Rude. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Ish. But here's the good news. That's all that happens. And don't forget, Sib, you have your hunter's mark. You can do again. Ew. Right, I was um, say, I, which... Huh? Sorry, no, I was just going to also say, uh, just for the thing, I am concentrating because of Searing Smite. Just wanted to Duly point that out. Duly noted. Duly noted. Um, and as a quick aside, if anyone knows anybody at D&D &D Beyond they can yell at, you'll be able to see all of their character sheets in real time right here on the stream if they would ever fix the plugin that lets you do that. Because for the last month, every time I fire it up, it says, there are no campaigns. There are campaigns. Just retaining the air, air of mystery. I don't know if it's new API or what. All I know is I've like logged in, logged out, installed, uninstalled, rebooted. I, I'm, I'm done playing the login. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, and this predates their ship. Well, maybe. I don't know. They need to fix it. Anyway, yes, we're at level four. Um, and, uh, so Sib, bonus action. Do you want to move your mark to somebody? Uh, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. let's put it on the one I'm on, I guess. I think I'm, I'm, am I on one or two? You are currently playing patty cake with number one, I suppose. Okay. So I'll put it on him. Okay. And then he is so the much on my hand and it's right there. I'm going to hit him in the eye if I can. That hand crossbow? Yeah. The one on the back of the wrist? The yeah. Because I'm right there. I hope I can. <laughs> you never know. 
That would be a natural 20. So 27. Jeez. <laughs> That's a shot. That's a mood. That's a mood. Jeez. And he is very much dead. Well, yeah. So he's kind of not so much glide as plummet. Um, I'm going to do a roll, hopefully. <laughs> Real clear. <laughs> Look really cool as he comes down. Ta da! Stuck the landing. All right. That works. Um, that that, bonus. Yeah. Uh, what's Fukan doing? He's going to try and chase uh, number two off. Or at least get between him and Katie and try and get him out of there. Okay. He's going to head after two. Yeah. I think so, that's the only one left. He swoops through there. And sees what he can do. Um, let's I'll just roll it over here just so that we can enjoy the luck of your dice. <laughs> I don't have a command for that yet, but I should. Yeah, he's not doing much this round. But he's trying. As he swoops past and flies off again. Um, he was almost as likely to hit Katie as he was to hit anybody else. Which then takes us over here to Aveline. Hi. Um, Hi. So everyone's gone, kind of. Um, uh, I'm going to. Eh, it's like half of them. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm looking. I'm, I got eyeballs. <laughs> I was debating between chasing. Uh, I will actually. I am going to scoot around and go, yeah, like here. Um. And yeah, smash him with my swordy sword. Okay. Twenty three to hit. Jeez. And ten points of damage. Um, that's gonna mess him up good. Um. Oh, and I forgot to add my extra temporary three. That's right, your hit points are now up to six temp hit points. I don't even need second wind. Uh, it depends on your point of view. They are they do go away after another fifty four seconds. Or the next time Sam sees something shiny. Yeah. It's fine. Instead of using second wind, I would like to use my um uh my throwing skill. What is it? Uh, use my hand axe with my superiority die. Oh, okay, quick toss. Yes, thank you. That's what I was looking for. No problem. Um, and try and hit the the far the far guy. Not... Oh, the one that's flying away. Yes. Oh wait, actually, how far? He's probably too far away as me. I dropped him forty feet away. Uh, yeah, I still want to hit him. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. No. <laughs> No. Never doing second attacks on my turn ever again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Harrison is going to continue to cower. What happened? Uh, quick recap. Everything is gone except the one Katie is fighting. Um, although, as Sam takes a second to take stock of the battlefield and look to see where to line up her gumball gun, uh, she hears another one of those roars in the distance. Except this one's a lot closer. The roar sounds bigger than the things we're fighting now, right? Yeah. Is it a free action to ask what to do, or is that an action? That, crying is a free action. <laughs> um, do, do we get the wagon unstuck and run, or do we keep fighting, gang? I think I'm stuck and run might be a good plan, because if we're going to have to fight, we're still going to fight. <laughs> okay, then JB's going to, because he'll take an attack of opportunity if he leaves, he's going to stay, JB, kill that thing, and can I run to the wagon and use... um? Nothing's busted on the wagon or anything, right? It's just stuck in mud. It's just stuck in the mud. Okay, can I cast then um Mr. Free or uh yeah, Mr. Freezy's Ray of Frost or 
yeah, I guess that's really all I got. I can't mending the ground. So I'll freeze the mud and try to, to like, I'll, I'll like poke down to Harrison and be like, come on, let's push. Let's push this thing out. We got to get going. Yes, yes, of course we must be mo on, on our way. Brilliant, my dear short and stout lady. Stout? <laughs> my pride, dear sir. Okay, I will, but I'll do that, and then JB is going to attack. Okay. Nat 20. Nat Jeez. 20 for JB. Does that mean I can double the yep. die? 2d8. Yep. Oh, 2d8, JB. You beautiful boy. 13 plus... Uh, what is his stats? Plus two force damage. He is going to both fists, rock 'em, sock 'em, robot style. Wow, that's a lot of damage in rapid succession. And that guy's toast. Yes. I love you, JB. Yeah. Yeah, come on. You we love JB good. too. We I know good, you do. Man. JB's the best. You, you have a moment reprieve and you're able to kind of start to get the wagon up out of the muck and the mud. And the, the one traveler that had been lifted away is like nursing his shoulder where there's just the, the leather jacket he was wearing is just ripped open from where the claws were in. Is it just his jacket or is like he actually hurt? There's... Don't waste... Don't waste a spell. I have good. I'll have band aids. I have Hello Kitty knockoff band aids. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I'm gonna see if Fukon can help push against the wagon as she's trying to get it out. Yeah. Add a little extra. As you JB get the wagon well. going and the horse kind of like starts to get going with it, um, you're able to start down the road. Uh, I'm gonna reset the initiative, um, which means spells are gonna wear off. So I'll clear those. He got away, which is fine. Although only one got away, which is pretty impressive for you guys. You wooed us. Aveline is very hurt, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> no, I'm definitely going to do um healing word on Aveline and just like touch her shoulder. Do you not have cure wounds mem uh, prepped? Uh, I have cure wounds prepped. Yeah, that's actually, I don't know why I thought I did. I will, I'll spend it. I'll do a cure no, wounds. No, 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 it's fine. Apparently it's I just didn't prepare a Apparently, I did healing word instead of cure wounds today. Ah, okay. I don't know how that happened, but because I, I haven't changed anything, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, I'll do healing word. Okay, roll it. So that's five. There you go. Done. I've got Ding. her at twenty-four now. She's above half. You should always keep your fighters above half. That's I. It. I will cure wounds as well. <laughs> I will cure wounds as well. I have three spell slots. This is only my second. I will cure wounds. It is your, it is like... <gasps> Ten points. There we go. Okay. So it's, it is like 11 o'clock and there's a long day ahead of you, but... Yeah. You know what? Live on the edge. I, I have a gumball machine now. It's fine. <laughs> gumball machine gun. God help us all. Hmm. <laughs> okay. As you, you, the wagon starts to go and the horse starts to, to, it's relatively slow plod, pulling this wagon just full of supplies, crates, boxes, bags. There's just enough room for you to, um, there'd be enough of room for a few people to get on it if you had to, but it's, it's not great. Um, Harrison starts walking along with it uh, as you start moving. He turns to Aveline. It's so, it's, it's marvelous to see you, though. 
Like, I can't, I don't believe I've met anyone from our particular, what do they call them again? The, the convergence. I think this is the, I think, you think, I think maybe perhaps only you and I came through. So you're saying you haven't run into anyone else. You, you didn't, there was every tent there. It was just you. Well, I, tent? I only saw the trees. It's true. You're not a very good horse rider. Uh, I, I, madam. I will have you know that on the stage, I have played multiple members of cavalry. This is real life. It's not the stage. And you think that I do not study the arts which I perform on stage? You wound me. Deeply. Painfully. So, Aveline, how do you know him? He was the last person I saw before the Convergence event. So you are from Aveline's world as well? Yes, indeed, my dear and fair woman. He bows very deeply and formally. I only knew him for about 30 seconds, maybe two minutes. And Katie that... very awkwardly, wait, before, Katie very awkwardly just... <laughs> Dabs? <laughs> kind of, she like tries to mimic the bowing, but she doesn't know what she's doing. I'm gonna slide into Aveline's DMs and um, just say, uh, Sir Lady Aveline, um, should we, do we trust this guy or like, nah? Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, he, he, he might've been trying to help, but he might've just been wanting some theatrical events happening. I, I don't know him too well. I, I can't say that I trust him. Although I also don't think he's, he's he seems relatively harmless, um, but not particularly useful, if I'm being honest. Okay. He, he he turns to Aveline after she makes the comment about how, but but in such a short time, I feel that we've created a bond, a, a righteous cause we both shared. I I guess you could call it that. We did both experience this. If if you made it through this event, maybe others did as well. Absolutely, and we should always hold out the highest hopes for those that we have crossed paths with that we might be reunited again, whether on the stage, or in the pit, or in the audience itself. For upon the stage of the world is, what better place is there to make our mark and roar into the darkness that we will not... And as he says that, you see behind him this massive bipedal lizard rumble out of the tree line and roar. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Is this Aveline part of just your theatrics him? or like... It, she just puts a oh hand my. over his mouth. <laughs> it, Katie's going to grab like Sib, like Sib and, and Sam and just be like, maybe if we don't move, it won't see us. It, it looks around briefly and then you notice that on the far side of it, you see one of those pteranodon people fly past it. And it kind of turns away from it and looks down the clearing of the road at you and then starts to charge. So, like, it's communicating where we are? More like it got, maybe it got hit by something sharp on one side, so it turned away and now it can see you. And you're not going to fly away. How many horses are there? There's one horse with the wagon. But, like, JB one. can run pretty fast. Actually, you know what? Let's go on towards it. We're going to make this interesting. There are two. It has two two good sized horses on it. Do you know this the speed of a horse? Does anyone know what the speed of a horse is? Not with that big of a wagon. It's I think the I mean, fastest. I like don't care 12? about the wagon anymore. <laughs> yeah, the wagon. The wagon. We don't care. I'm about just the asking if JB can become a horse. He has a forty foot movement speed. A uh, riding horse is 60 feet. Dang it. Okay, never mind. Um, I'm immediately 
Although I think actually Sam would probably prefer to ride on JB. Yeah. Right. I'm grabbing Sib and like untying a horse and telling her to get on it and start going. Take one of the the people, people um, with us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have two horses. There are four of you. Oh, I'm not getting on a horse. Yeah. I don't know how to ride a horse. Who is fast? I'm as big as the horses are. Is Sib fast? I'm 30 feet. Oh. Um, I yeah, would also point out you. it's got a pretty good stride on it. I think we kind of need to fight this thing. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I want to no. send Kukon after it to try I and kinda see if we can. I kind of want to fight this thing. Think okay. of the bones we could, what we could do with its skin. <laughs> I, I, I believe we could get all I, level leather armor, brand new I, lizard. I, I, I'm quite confident that there's a certain particular line for this moment. I believe it is the better part of valor is discretion. I'm putting Frederick on a horse then. And yeah, I think we need to just try to go. We could throw a couple on a horse. I'm still gonna like send Fukon to try and distract it. Wait, who is Harrison then? That's the guy with the beard. His name's Harrison. Yeah. Not Frederick? Not Frederick. I thought his name was Frederick. No, it's been Harrison. Are you sure? Oh. No, I, I said it down... wrong the first time we met him, and I've been meaning to change it, and I've never updated you guys on Discord. I will write. Oh. I will <laughs> fix that. I like Frederick. Does, like does he count as an animal? Harrison. Not Harrison, but the big lizardy thing. Yes. Or is it too big? Can Maybe. I try and speak with it and try and convince it to. We're not tasting it. There's one right over there. And send him over out of a different direction. That didn't make any sense. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, um, can I do? I have, I uh, also, I have magical tinkering. Could I do a, emit an odor? Can I emit a, a very strong, bloody, meaty odor? Not bloody, meaty, because that's going to attract them. No, I want to throw it. I want to oh. throw the object in the, like, could, like could if we can veer off take it and east, like, can we throw it? Away? Yeah, the other way. Ooh, and I will also cast Taumaturgy where it is, where the smell is coming from as like a, a a crying animal, like a wounded Dude. animal. Oh, that, you know what? That is true. So a gumball is less than five pounds. Can I cast it on a gumball and shoot that gumball a hundred feet away from us? I'm still doing palmaturgy. Okay. Evelyn is watching in support, just like. Good job, magic users. A hundred okay. feet away from us. So Sib is going to cast Speak with Animals and start shouting at the th massive dinosaur, look over there, while, uh, there. while Katie is casting a spell to make a, mat, to make a sound of a dying creature over there. And the gumball Sam goes? is blasting a smelly gumball over there to create a massive scent of dying animals. Of like, Smelling of like meaty. fresh, like fresh, meaty blood, like that. You know, like the a steak when you first cut, mm, mm, delicious. Right. Does it smell like a hundred pounds of dragon steak? Can we make it? <laughs> yeah. I know what that smells like, and it doesn't say that there is. It emits an odor. It does not give me limitation on the odor. Nope. Oh. <laughs> loophole so much as using your skills wisely i listen i picked a class that i had to be creative with okay <laughs> okay okay um i don't hmm i don't hmm uh, yes, we do. Thank, thank you for that, um, Zia Known, for coming by and asking that particular question. Um, the artist, she's on here. It's, I know, I think it's CK Art. There it is. I knew I had a command for it. Um, and she is, and she does commissions, and um, she was great. She was part of our Kickstarter, actually, which was really fun and exciting. Um, although I will tell you, she gets backed up really quick. Um, because she does amazing work and she does it relatively at cost. Okay. So, um, 
So here's where I'm at. I don't feel like I need to make anybody make a roll because this plan is really good. And I'm going to let y'all have it. Um, this thing that none of your characters recognize, but by the time I'm done describing it, you will all go, oh, that sounds like a small T-Rex. And then I'm guessing Tiffany will go, I think that's an Allosaurus. Probably. <laughs> um, kind of like seems distracted and it starts over in that direction. One of the other um, Tyranna folk swings down to try to peel it in yours and it snaps at it and then goes after that scent. To which one of the two people that you're traveling with besides Harrison goes, we should go. <laughs> and they get the horses moving and they get the horses up to a pretty good clip right out of the gate. As you're jogging along with them. You're quietly. <laughs> As quietly Remember. as you can. Sneaky hands. Sneaky hands. Sneaky well, yeah, hands. I was taught this. I was taught the new stuff. I'm in the wagon doing the hands. I think we like threw JB in there <laughs> so that like the sun wasn't glinting off of him. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a tarp over him. Yeah, we just got a blanket. That works. Okay, let me put that there while we're paused very briefly. Confirm that that works. No, it does. All right, cool. I need an excuse to put that in my stream deck anyways. Ah, you have some time as you travel down the road a bit further. Um, things kind of start to get quiet again. And you start to lose the sounds of that roaring creature um, as you make your way around the different bends and twists in the tree line. And uh, Harrison has a chance to kind of regard all of you. He turns to Avalyn. I just, I'm just so pleased to see you and to see someone. Have you seen others? No one else. Oh. I lost a lot of people that day. And oh, not to say I'm not happy to see you, but. You were hoping I was someone else. Yeah. The tragedy of lost love is a story I know too well, both from on and off stage. One has mm -hmm. to experience loss to portray it for an audience. And I fear that my skills at portrayal of those crushing heartbreaks are often far too authentic. Well, maybe we finally have something in common. Well, I, we had quite a bit in that time that we knew each other. A shared interest in weaponry, a, an interest in using it against those that would repress others, a bit of a flair for theatrics. I mean, I recognize that you tend to dress down for the station, but let's be honest, there are a few marks of rank there that you show a little bit more than one has to. We have been considering getting hats. Hats. Hats are key to character def definition. Oh, don't I have the the hat from? Oh my gosh, I want to take out the hat from. What's his face? Oh, what is it called? Oh, where did it? Fancy feathered hat. I'm gonna take out the rumpled, the rumpled fancy feathered hat, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put it on Emily. Come and say hi real quick. <laughs> Okay, we have a quick. Hi. Hi. Hello. Good night. There we go. Yes, definitely. Yeah, she's tired to go to bed early. The dragoon hat. Yes. Well, that's a big, yes. tall wool one, right? Yep. Yes. You I don't know. You just said it was a fancy feathered hat, so I'm gonna put it yep. on Aveline. Do the really bad bow. Say, sir, ma'am. <laughs> and you know what? I have. I'm gonna first. I'm gonna rip the hat right off. And I'm gonna put a layer of I'm gonna put a layer of dragon teeth that we kept from the white dragon on it, and that way you have more teeth. And then I put it back on, like bangs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, like on the bill, on the bill of okay, the hat. Okay, okay, okay. Not, not hanging down. That's this is the too hat much. ribbon is now. Yeah. We don't want teeth. clattering. You've already got a, a, 
you know, disadvantage to stealth. We don't want more of that. <laughs> that is true. I do already have a disadvantage. This might be the first time ever Aveline blushes. Just like, she doesn't know what to do. It's like, I just, I don't need, I don't need the hats or the names. I, I really. Sir Lady Ma'am, oh, Holiness Empress Aveline. Definitely not on Empress. The back, I could be like, congratulations. You don't have a choice. <laughs> Ma'am, sir, ma'am, sir, ma'am, yeah. ma'am, ma sir, general, ma'am, <laughs> sir, sir, general, lady sir. of hats, of teeth, of fighting, of good sword, good Have sword, very good sword. Have a hat. As you're working your way along the road and kind of like at this point, obviously the, the wagon slowed to a walk so you can walk next to it and have these conversations. Harrison will finally turn to, to Aveline. So, so to what end are you traveling down this particular bit of non-pavement? Uh, well, we're we're trying to get to. Um, I forgot the name, and I don't have my notebook today. <laughs> I have family near the Arbor of Anne. Arbor of Anne. The Arbor of Anne. Well, what a fascinating coincidence. So are we. And we'll find out after the break why they're going there. We'll take a quick fiver. Everyone have a, a good deep breath. If, if you're new to the channel, enjoy some of the clips, of, uh, the highlights from over the last year of Dungeons and Dragons. We'll see you back here in five. You're swinging again. Oh man, oh, this, this guy. guy. Is tough. This guy. What's up with this guy? That he's what? He... What? This doesn't happen. <laughs> this doesn't happen. All right, we're going. Let's go. Okay. And followed by the smite. Come on. Timber. We got this. I mean, if he doesn't go down now, I don't know. And he, go, he dro finally drops. Yes. And is out of the scrap. Um, gets to the guy in the... He goes in, he does a few loops, he comes back out, and beep. Okay. Beep once if there's dead bodies in there. Beep twice. No, that doesn't work. All right, beep twice. It... No, that doesn't work. Okay, beep. Oh, screw it. I'm going to see if I can sneak up. and like not forced or anything it's just it's brilliant um i think the quote i have in particular is actually came from chat which was uh the spell slide into dms which then became a spell um that's just <laughs> very it's very endearing so i love it <laughs> i'm going to follow it up with by saying that the the reaction to receiving a message spell was an absolute just as far as role play goes, as you seem to be doing really well with it. Ooh, Matt 20 is uh, Oh my God. Nice. I shattered it. <laughs> wow. Well, you can roll your damage. I don't 25? Because <laughs> I got three sixes? <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Why she just hulked that? out. <laughs> Rage hard. Yeah, I think you should rage all the time. I think you I should like never rage. not, yeah, yeah this, never this not be raging. Well, There's where all two. our good rolls were hiding. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's why they were so bad earlier. We were saving up. But... Stop hitting my friends. <laughs> Oop, They're damaged books with that kind of attitude. Well played. Wow. Oh no, that whole love interest thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I almost killed him. <laughs> I... <laughs> Having taken a, a holy order of some kind and other oaths. I'm thinking like an elven, like really. S <laughs> that makes a sense. Kung Fu Elven Monk? Kung Fu Elven Monk. <laughs> 
Okay. Yes. That meditates a lot. I can, yeah. I can, I can live with that. Because elves don't have to sleep as much, so it totally right. Yeah. Safe, yes. So we assume this guy is bad. Oh, he's super bad. Well, you know. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Good. I mean, he keeps I on had... trying to. He's a dick. He keeps on trying to coerce Irina into coming up to his castle and fucking die, become a vampire lady, and she's not into it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, okay. So, sorry. The one that's got the one that's between Chrysanthemum and her bottle. Yes. Yes. That's a dangerous place to be for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heading that way. I'll tag oh, her she already again. Has the potion. She already has the potion. No, she just handed you the book. And as soon as your hands touched it, she let go and run. She's not going to take the potion? Yeah, she's got bigger fish to fry. Like, gain her ass out of there. <laughs> you shot her. I'm trying to unshoot her. <laughs> to the best of my abilities. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I'm a genie in the bottle, baby. Maybe <laughs> re-roll. Yeah, re-roll it. Re-roll it. The birds are yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Re Everyone's in on these, the re-roll. I screwed these birds up earlier. We need Come a on. high roll. We got yeah. this. Let's do this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> So, um, Every time! I'm the bard uh, who does not want to be a I'm really bad at being a bard. That is amazing. Worst bard ever. <laughs> um, Yikes. The good news is, see. after this adventure, you can start taking levels of anything else. Anything else! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Um, okay. I feel like we should not be meddling anyway. If there's someone killing someone else, it might be for good reason. You don't know. Oh my. Look <laughs> how <laughs> dark. Wow. We have killed lots of people for various <laughs> and sometimes no good reason. Yeah, she's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord, we're murdering I'm not one to judge, okay? Uh, uh, am I to conclude the party is going to enter into the house? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go. Common, Mother Clucker, do you speak it? <laughs> <laughs> we need some information. <laughs> I'm not sorry, by the way. Beat you, they get to win. Okay, I can handle that. It's a, it's a 40 cent bet to me. Bet five dollars. Table max. All right. Eighty cent raise. Oh, this is gonna make eighty it. cents. Eighty cents is for fools, young lady. <laughs> oh, jeez. Have... Four eighty. Get I, out. I can't wait to save these. He's I have out. a king. I have a king. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> you were wondering if I had a king. I have a king. Out. Get out. Out. Oh, she's gonna go in. She wants. She's she doesn't thinking buy about it. it. She doesn't buy it. Cause she has a four. I think i think she has an ace four yep so here's the deal she's in some would say she's in <laughs> oh does she have the other king yes she has the other one yep but we have the 10 and we take that pot away from her yep Wait, why am I here? I legit have been screaming this entire time. So you know what? What is the health of everybody You're right now? You're also full health. You want to like come right. back and Everyone's the full health. Like, no, we're not. The rest all of right. us are like highly injured. You're on yeah, the Yeah, we're all hurting health. Yeah. pretty wanna, like, bad. The jam board bit? says that everybody's. Oh. Oh, refresh. Refresh. Never mind. That. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Ember's alive because I just healed for 12. <laughs> Show is at 12 out of 41. You, you were, were like literally seeing around full on the outside health of this entire like, time, Come weren't you? Join me. I'm full health. <laughs> Yo, Show I'm did it have a spot at the jam. Okay, and we're back from the break. So, as we left for the break, um, 
we had established that Harrison is also traveling to the Arbor of Anne. Um, and we left off with him making that statement. So I will allow everyone, I'll, I'll reiterate, uh, what, what a coincidence. We are also traveling to the Arbor. Well, I should amend that. These two fine folk are traveling, and I happen to be going in the same direction for lack of reason to travel in a different direction. So you're Why just are you two? Yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, he's your guy. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, why are you guys going in that direction? Um, one of them looks back from where they're driving the wagon. Oh, that's where we live. That's where we're headquartered. Do you happen to know where a very s small machine is in there? Can you uh, no? Did you, I'm a DM, Aveline. Maybe don't bring up the machine to the people we don't is know it, that well. Maybe oh, is it, is maybe it that don't. important of machine? I just I didn't. Maybe don't bring it up. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Can you name a different machine for me? I'm trying to distract him by asking what that symbol means. It looks means like on him. Their stuff. And she points to JB. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks just like him. We're looking for another one of him. His brother. Hmm. Name. Oh. Barry. Um, I, well, I, I'm, I believe I have seen devices like that around the ruins. I haven't gotten very close. We're still very new. Which, how, how long have you been here then? Um, well, we, we joined, we joined up with the, Wow, I really did give it that lame of a name, didn't I? Oh, well, we'll go with it. We really did join in with the infinite diver. No, that actually wasn't that bad. If I leave that out, it doesn't sound as creepy. Hang on, DM needs to update his notes. We're just going to take out the word cult. It's not a cult, I promise. <laughs> Always a good way to start. Take out the word cult. <laughs> It solid, made a, we're solid. just very passionate. It made a lot more sense this morning when I was writing it, but I was also addled on coffee and having had a lot of teenagers yelling at me. Let's try that again. We've just recently joined the Infinite Divergence. Who is the Infinite <clears throat> Divergence? And they both I just it. tried to draw it, and honestly, I really draw, drew a uterus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 like why I just really why did I do this? Wait, so is it You're like not alone? Oh you can't You're see it. Alone. Never mind. Yeah. So Drew something like that. Like like oh. that? Yeah. Or oh my goodness. Is but it the... like in this is it in the center? I'm part? liking I'm liking the second one a lot better. <laughs> see folks, my, this, my ended up like this is why you hire sensitivity editors. Because in my brain, it worked. And then Molly drew it. And suddenly in my brain, it didn't work. <laughs> and as the I one mean, person at it. the table who doesn't have one, I think I'm allowed a certain amount of, of credibility no, no, for not no. having put that connection together. No, no, no. But, but honestly, I kind of love it. <laughs> Same. It's great because they probably wouldn't think of it that way. And that makes it even better. Fair I enough. I truly love it. That we will keep it. Yeah, because that is kind of like what oh, I pictured in my brain. One? Yeah. The oh, okay. 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 Well, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> They're they, totally wearing the sign of the uterus. They yeah. could be I wings, or they could be fallopian loops. tubes. <laughs> Up I, to interpretation. Yeah. Exactly. It's whatever you want it to be. It's so diverse. Yes. It's, a, it's so think, divergent. The you know? infinite divergence. It says something that that's where all of your minds went. That's my takeaway right now. Mm-hmm. Hey, I drew it. Mine was like a little amoeba. The the Dodge Ram logo, for example. Oh, crap. Now we're all going to be picturing that. <sighs> I'm so, I didn't mean to derail. I really yes, didn't. Yes, you did. I just, you totally but, did. Got me, come on, I drew it. I had... To, okay. Me too. It's just a... It's a side bonus. Yeah. It is. Um, anywho, they say, we're, we're still... We're still simply having recently joined... We're nowhere near being graduates yet. What do you, what did you guys do? Well, it's, well, it's a community. We, we look out after each other 
and we, I, I understand, well, there's a lot of rumors about what's going on, uh, because again, only the graduates really know what's happening. Um, but that's kind of how it works, because you have to earn your rank. You have to, well, graduate. That right, sounds like a cult. What drew you to, jo- like, what was the perk of joining? Oh, well, there's, the, it's a very safe place to live. Uh, they've, they've recovered most of the ruins of the Arbor of Anne and, and purged them of monsters or anything else that may have moved in that shouldn't be there. We look out for each other. Um, there's, there's an open mic night on Tuesdays. Nice. What do they ask for you joining? Well, you, you do your part to maintain the community. You help with the farm. You go on supply runs, which sometimes are a little more dangerous than they always tell you. But, um, you know, you could trade for things and, and you get great. Wait until you see this. He turns around on the wagon and he, he moves some tarps out of the way and he pulls out this big black disc. There's music stored on this. <gasps> Is that a vinyl? We actually spoke about vinyls before because I went through my notes. Yeah, earlier on in the 7-Eleven, I think, right? We talked yeah. it, We talked about vinyls. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah. I think it has some kind of a chant written on it because it says here, earth, wind, and fire. <gasps> okay, I'm going to take JB's finger and put it on the disc like it's gonna go the middle part's gonna go through one finger and his other finger's gonna act as the needle and then i'm gonna like open his mouth i was weirdly hoping you'd figure out how to use fukan for it oh get (laughs) fukan yeah the nose yeah fukan get your nose in here (laughs) as yes we go full flintstones tonight yes (laughs) right yeah, there's some song Beans. that starts playing about astrology. It's that got a good beat to it, though. That is fascinating. And it kind of has this weird vibe to it, because you have to figure out how to keep the record turning. But yes, folks, when there's massive EMPs, the only music storage devices that will survive are CDs and vinyl. And I still haven't mentally figured out how you play a CD with magic yet. I'm Technically working tapes. on it. No, magnetic tapes. Well, yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I had that thought. Like, nope, cassette tapes, eight tracks, those are all gone. That mixtape that you put so much energy into for that one girl in tenth grade that you were so sure was into you, and you could you just had to show your show her your soul through the greatest songs that you knew. At which point, she literally left it in the classroom after you handed it to her. Out. Those things. I found Some the mixtape that my dad made for my mom when they were 19 before I left, and I was like, <laughs> That's exactly. adorable. But I'm hoping this will earn me a possibility that I might have an opportunity to study and test for graduation. What does uh, graduation entail? What do you have to study? Well, there are tests. What tests of strength, tests of like a honor, written like exam? archery? Sip would be great at any sort. Of, Sip could graduate at any point if it's archery. Well, I'm not many We're people are, are, are very sure stabbing. of exactly how that works, but we you do survive know dinosaurs. That's pretty good. Oh, indeed. We've this journey has been fascinating. So, but you said you don't know the test you don't know what type of test it is to graduate well we're both too new we haven't really had a chance to earn the opportunity to understand what goes on behind that we know that there's great work being done you keep saying too new and you're because you have not graduated yet but you have not told us how long time wise you've been here oh um i think we left the imperial city about a year ago wasn't it the other, the, the woman goes, yeah, I, I think about a year. Yeah. So you've been doing this for a year and you're still too n- new to even know what the test is. Well, it's yes. They're very selective. Um, the grand cum laude does not let everyone, anyone just approach and understand the secrets that they're studying. Is that one of those spells that you guys do? 
the the laude, the cum laude. The grand cum laude, yes. No, I don't think it's a spell. Okay. I think it's I think it's a lot like the Sir Lady Ma'am Aveline Empress of all. There's definitely no Empress in that that's all. You, but I like the flourish. You could the the flow is very nice. The the grand it's pretty nice. It has a nice it it, it is very nice, especially with the hat. I like if that you, it changes every time because your magnificent knows no bounds. So mm, I have uh, to well, add in the hat somewhere. Mm. You could if you want the like, actual title, just not Empress, uh, you could say Duchess. Oh, I like Ooh, that. Duchess. No, I'm going to write that down. Harrison. Oh, of course. Your Grace. No, no, <gasps> not grace. that's not what we're going for. Oh, oh. Gr- your you know, Grace. Sir, you don't look Madam like a Grace. You're going to faint I've into had a lot of people lap. say that. <laughs> she does I mean, catch her. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> Your, your grace, your majesty. <laughs> no, 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 no. Majesty is for kings and emperors, queens and empresses. Your grace is the proper form of address for a duchess. So, mm. Sir, madam, your grace. Feather hatted Aveline. General. General, your G- grace. Sir, G- Sir Lady Grace Aveline with the largest hat and the best of sword. Ooh. I do not know if you can fit that on a piece of armor, but uh, we can I've got, try. I have some tools. We could probably. Well, I mean, not in one line. It would have to, you know, go maybe down. Maybe two lines. Maybe We two could lines. maybe embroider it in the lining. Oh, I love embroidery. Or or in the, in the lining of your armor. Is this the only way I'm going to get that dragon scale armor? <laughs> yes. Possibly, yes. Okay. Uh... So how did you two end up in this... Um... Novitiate uh, process. Well, it, that was part of coming to the community. We were we had we had decided we needed to to strike out and to see what else was there, and we traveled a bit. And when we found ourselves at the Arbor Van, it just seemed natural. They, it was a very welcoming community. They were happy to have us, and and it was it sounded very fascinating that they were doing research on on the convergences themselves. Thus, thus the infinite divergence. They were doing research on the convergence events as well. As well? Are the people are researching it? Well, of course they would be. These have been happening for a hundred years. More. I'm sure there's lots of people researching them. I suppose that makes sense. Have you, have you collided many atoms? Uh, who? Adam. Who? Technically two atoms. You know, Madam I'm Abin. I suppose there must be two atoms to at least two atoms to collide. I don't think it's that important for these guys. Well, it's two of them. Maybe their names are atoms. If we what, just hit them together. Twins to twin atoms that I kind of sure, think like let jousting? you believe it's two people named Adam. Uh-huh. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you have two atoms in your in your infinite divergence. When you pass, when you graduate, does your name become Adam? Oh, like a title. No. Oh. They kind of like each you other. You have to kill anybody in the steps of joining this thing. That's a big oh, gosh, one for me. No, no, this is academics rule the day. Understanding of poetry, of, of writing, of mathematics. If if you can prove that you truly understand the, the lost art of the electricities, you are considered highly valuable. You mean like this? And I'm going to point to JB who then waves at them. Mm, perhaps. So they... What's the goal of progressing up? What do you do? Well, you, you get access to, to greater understanding. And an and opportunity to participate in the research, an opportunity even to, to learn of its natures. They say the Graham Quilaudi is very close to something big. Have you ever heard a tale of a, of a Ted? Theodore. No. Sure. 
I can't think no? of anyone that I've met with that name. Okay, just curious. Should I have? No. I mean, it's a common name other than that. Any gnomes? I don't think I've seen any. There there were a few dwarves and yeah. some elves. Mostly did malcontents from the Imperial City as well. Half elves. They were very anxious to get out of there. Why is that? I think there were family issues. Like um, they're they are related to the royal family or Oh, I highly doubt they were that connected. Have I heard of this group before or something like this? No, yeah, roll me a history check. <laughs> My negative one. I got an eight. <clears throat> nope. Eh, maybe. Can I There's... roll it? I have a plus three to history. Can I roll a history check? Um, I've been here my whole life. Yeah, you've been there a while. Yeah, go for it. 13. 13 is. Next time we'll have to actually work together. Um, This particular group, no, you have not heard of. Um, But your family hasn't really ventured this west and south. So you're pretty far off the map. Well, I suppose we are, are going to this infinite diver sam did you is this something that you would be interested in i mean i'm not really big on institutions i would be willing but you are the, but you are the smartest person i know oh you would definitely graduate and get to the grand i really want to say something else and i'm not going to the we appreciate grand that cum <laughs> Pooba. We always call them Poobahs myself. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe I can take the test when we get there if we want, if it's fine. Just for, just for prowess. Oh, well, you you can't just, you can't just skip the line. Why not? Well, there's a process. You have to be initiated. Well, I clearly know a lot more about electronics than you do. Hence the robot. Well, that that's that's good, but but usually people that are new to to receive their their initiation have to bring something from a convergence. They have to bring something that can be studied as part of a convergence event. Me, well, I volunteer. Yeah, we have people from convergence. Oh, actually, don't you, Planet Harrison? I mean, we just ran through a cup. I'm sure, I have mud in my shoe from a convergence. Oh, well, that that yeah, might actually, qualify. This dinosaurs. This is dinosaurs from a convergence. Ah. Well, we don't have the dinosaur. We left it behind because it was going to eat us. Yeah, but isn't we this need it one? Alive. Ah. Isn't Fukan? Fukan's just gonna tuck his head under the, t- yeah. <laughs> the canvas. I mean, I'm not ah. volunteering Fukan to be studied upon. I gotta volunteer like a frog. Either. You can examine him at most. Well, and I've also come through a divergence event. I'm right. not from here. What what do you what sort of things do you need? Well, that's just well beyond anything we would know. I just we we had to tra- travel fairly far and find things that had come through a convergence in order to to receive our even our armbands and and receive the the initial initiations. I I am. Also curious, is this your first time going to the Arbor of Anne? Oh, no, no. That's where the settlement is. Well, we would love to go with you guys. But also, do you know where this relic museum is? What I can't remember the name of it. I'm looking. Oh, yes, I... the museum. What was the, what was the relic museum? The giant called? closet. Right, right, right. Because that's what we're, I mean, we would love to stop, you know. Okay, refresh the DM's memory. Uh, how did you get on track to go to a museum? 
Ted, Ted told us that we needed to go there and give us enough clues that we found a museum, I think. Right. Or we were talking yeah. about museums. I think you yeah. were. Like a, it's a big closet with dinosaurs. Yeah, that you pay to go yeah, in yeah. for like the shoes. There, there were lots of jokes yeah. about getting everything right. back in the closet. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Got it. I can't, I wrote that down, but I didn't write the name of it down. Yeah, I'm trying to go oh, back through my very bad notes right yeah. now. Okay, but that I was not something that you, that's not where the device was supposed to be. No, but we did talk about it as a point of interest. You wanted to explore it as such. I think right. we found, I don't think he exactly knew where. No, he said it was in the map. astrology section of the college in Arbor of Anne is yeah. where the device, I'm not saying this out loud, by the way. Right. Yes. No. This is player. Player, player discussion. That's fair. That's fair. That's yes. fair. Wait, so um, we know it's a college, but we don't know these guys are like. There's like a, to a college? I think there's like a like a Hubble telescope section of this college, like an astrology area. And he said it's this like in section. there. OK. Because he had given us a map. So we do have yeah, a map right. of like okay. where he thought it I was. We had it. So. That's fair. Um. They do recall there being a facility, a ruin that was said to have once been a museum. Okay. Where are you held up at the university? Have we already confirmed this? Well, it, it's not really much of a university now. Right. It's I mean, like your compound now. Well, parts of it are still, I suppose, because there's a great deal of teaching that goes on among the graduates. Are visitors allowed in? You said this is very secretive, or do you have to be some sort of Oh, no, of everyone's welcome, at least, you know, in the main buildings. I don't, don't expect to get into any of the study areas, though. We're not even allowed in those. Only the graduates. Correct. How many graduates are there? And they kind of look at each other. I'm, I'm not really sure. We, I don't think we've met all of them. But there are many. There's, there's a, not just like six. Ten. There's a fair number, I believe. Have you met any of them? Oh yes, they're they're the ones that that bring out word from the Gram Cum Laude as to what we need to be doing. If there needs to be a change, or if someone needs to make an errand, or if an area of the ruins need to be reclaimed. Is it? Do you think we're going to be on the road for at least an hour? Oh, yes. With my right tool for the job, can I create a set of tools um, to help me recreate the armbands that they're wearing for us? A little set of four armbands. You want to make a sewing machine? Basically, yeah. Travel embroidery machine. Sure. Okay. And then I would like to recreate their. I mean, I would. I kind of, kind of want to do this in the down low because I don't know if they'll be cool with it. But we have the wagon. You can be doing it in the back of the wagon. Yeah. Can I like? I mean, JB is a vending machine. I'm three feet tall. Can I hide behind <laughs> JB? Well, I'm gonna take a nap. You guys. I need a little rest. A, nap, a lot nap. of excitement rest, for me. I would like to say probably the whole party knows she's doing something because of naps and Sam. Just... I'm going to DM. I'm going to DM you guys. You know what I'm about. <laughs> I, I, yeah. If that's possible, I would like to do that. Okay. That works. Um, yeah, totally. The ride continues. Harrison is, is happy to talk more about his travels, which have not been that terribly interesting. He's been in and out of the capital city a few times, mostly just making where he can, literally singing for supper at taverns where they come across. Um, somewhat disappointed at the, the, the current tax structure in the Imperial City as it, it seems that like quite a bit of his income is constantly going up into the Imperial coffers at the end of an evening, but it's such as the, the price of security as they make their way along. 
Um, aside from making armbands, anyone else engaging anything curious, interesting, or otherwise distressing to your dungeon master? Um, Aveline does want to talk to talk to Harrison a little bit, just to okay. He'll essentially, make him, he'll make himself available, yeah. and he'll even pick up on a, a, a little bit of the, the tension and. And kind of slow, you know, he'll jump off the wagon to walk next to you and then take much slower steps for a few beats as the wagon starts to pull away a bit. And he you know, taps the side of his nose and he glances at you. What, where did you end up when you came, came through the convergence? Oh, yes. Well, once I got to my bearings, I... I don't recall what direction I struck out from the forest. Um, I remember finding myself, as I cleared the tree line, uh, it seemed a rather abrupt transition to f a, what looked like farmland. I just, I'm trying to consider, I know I ended up getting ahead of you at that time. I made it back to my camp and I I just want to know they're safe. Well, of course they are. How can you be certain of that? Well, they have to be. Our, our, chunk, our piece of reality fell away. We were teleported to another land. Of course everyone there is still fine. I'll tell myself that. Well, if we're being frank with each other and I find myself far too sober for such thoughts, which I hope soon we will remedy. The alternative is simply unbearable. And I will not have it. I do not tolerate the unbearable. I remove them from the theater at the hands of men larger than me. Is that why you're an actor, so you can not be yourself? No, far from... I'm an actor so I can be everyone, myself included. Okay. And truly, what more noble cause is there than that of the entertainer? Aveline genuinely laughs at that, given she was fighting a rebellion, but... <laughs> I think when he says it, I go, it's the Grand Master Duchess of Lady Sir Aveline of Hat and Big Sword is a lot better than that. But, but, but truthfully, we are the communicators, the storytellers. The single first profession ever upon any sentient race was that of the teller of tales, the one who chronicled the history of the tribe. Who brought knowledge down. I think it might be the cook. You guys are out but of your But you're shot. definitely second. <laughs> well, if you are a teller of tales, and obviously you are an entertainer, tell my story because I need someone to hear it. And if she's here... I want her to know I am too. Well, now there is a bit of a thing about that. I did find that sharing too often that I was affiliated with what would best be known as a rebellion. It's not exactly a popular thing to admit to in most company. I have also experienced that actually here. Um... But but ears to the ground always for others. Because it would be good to know if there are others that have come through or perhaps find some confirmation that those that we love are still well and truly set. Indeed. If you hear anything, I will, I will talk to Sam and she's good at Figuring out how to communicate with them without needing to be so close. I, If you hear and, or see anyone from our world, I need to know it. Yes, absolutely. 
So what was his name? Is his name? His? The, the gentleman left behind. Oh. Uh, not. Her name was Juniper. Is Juniper. Is Juniper. Beautiful name. Beautiful yes. name. I assume she had a, a countenance to match it. Absolutely. And she's clever. So if anyone made it through this, it's her. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if she caught your eye, she had to have something of her own. I, maybe another time. And she scoots on ahead. Yeah, takes a moment, and as you, you glance back, there's you can actually see him like replaying in his head, like, and you that, that look, the look many of you probably know of. Did I just say the wrong thing? <laughs> and he kind of scratches his beard a few times and shrugs and kind of catches up and settles into the wagon next to everybody else. And you enjoy some quiet travel. <laughs> Um, Katie is going to lean over, just kind of her arms folded. Sometimes it is better to not talk, isn't it? Absolutely. Sometimes I wonder why I open my mouth. <laughs> oh, no, not you. I was talking. To, I was talking to Harrison. <laughs> oh, abs oh, you were talking to Harrison. Sorry, I missed I was that. Talking to Emily, that was just telling Emily, hey, shut up. <laughs> hey, Emily, maybe you shouldn't talk anymore. A little bit of Aveline's like, why did I say anything to this guy? So I was... <laughs> well, I thought it was a fair question as we were bonding. It was a fair question. You just need to learn when to stop when you're ahead. Nah. Although I suppose then learning is a little stunted. The Duchess and I have a bond that can never be broken. At least mm. in as long as we are, it appears, the only two from our reality here. That is true. She's I do envy you. She's stuck with me. <laughs> Time will tell whether that is a good or a bad thing. I might say the same in the, in the converse of the situation as well. That is fair. But as it is, we travel on. We discover what secrets lay down this road, and if they have a decent beer that they've brewed for the teller of tales, the singer of songs. Not yet, no. I, they, they don't. They use a lot of hops. It's terrible. But just, just saying. Well, I do find that closed groups, such as ones that have armbands, tend to actually make better beer than the average one. There are things that are bad about groups with armbands. Just yeah. energy drinks, and that is far more valuable to me. You know, they'll probably have those too. Those groups with armbands, of course. But Katie is going to kind of lean over and more quietly say to Harrison, "What do you gather from this group? I notice you do not have an armband on yourself, but what?" What is your, as the teller of tales, what is, what is your read on this group? Oh, oh, they're, they're harmless. They've, they probably have some soul that has found a book that he read and can say many a great line out of, and that has convinced them all that they should be, address him with some title. Which, why not? I mean, whether one bears the name of Baron von Zarovich or the name of Burgomaster Kolanovich, or whether one dons a wig and demand that they be addressed as the Lady Irina, are they not all the same person underneath it all? I don't know, are they? Still, so, I mean... That domain sounds entirely dreadful. But names carry power, as you well know. Mm, they can. And, and certain names and certain naming 
can influence others more than uh, than other names. This is true, but again, we assume that there's something more to this. I, if I were a betting man, and I would be had I the coin to do so, uh, I would bet this is a, a quiet little calm, you know what, it sounds like once was a place of scholarly learning, where someone has found a way to dupe others into digging up the potatoes for him. Which, again, if all are happy, who are we to judge? I hope that's all that it is. But we'll see once we get there, won't we? Indeed. Indeed we shall. The afternoon passes somewhat quietly. Um, the two in the front kind of, kind of go on about some of the things they'd found on their travel. Um, and they still continue talking about the, the vinyl records and which ones they, how they might dole them out because they don't want to give it all away at the beginning. Maybe squirrel a few away later in case they need to earn some quick favors. Um, and slowly but steadily, you make your way up towards, you, as you come in, you can see where there are some houses that have been rebuilt and repurposed. Wrecks of um, houses also scatter the area. This was once some kind of a suburb. Uh, most of the buildings have fallen into disrepair, but some have been rebuilt up. And as you get closer, you can see where they've cleared out some farmland and they're maintaining it. And for the most part, everyone you're seeing has that same armband on, identifying them as members. And there's probably about a third don't. Um, no one, no, none of the children are wearing them. But there's a bit of a community that's, that's thriving here. Whenever I finish the armbands, I will give them out, but... I will slide into DMs as I stealthily hand them off to be like, hey, just for when, you know, we get, when we're away from these guys, because they know we're not a part of this, but like blending in for later, maybe? I don't know. Might be useful. Okay. You make your way up towards one of the checkpoints that the road, as the roads come in, and there's another one that's, few people are standing there they're armed one has the spear another one has a, a shield that they're holding they're kind of casually holding you can see a sword strapped to his hip and they they wave up at the the wagon drivers and they exchange some pleasantries you know relate where they've been quickly relate the the story of the four of you jumping to their defense on the road uh, mention harrison very briefly until he kind of, whereas you saved them, he tagged along. And he's about to jump in with a, a brief correction, and he kind of stops himself and just, you know, resets the pistol in his belt. I'll make a fifth armband for Harrison. I'm going to pass him an armband. And just a nod. Just nod when I Probably hand it to him. After the checkpoint, though, right? Yeah, uh, after <laughs> I'll make, I'll pass it to him and nod. They, um, there's an exchange, and one of them actually points at Harrison and whispers something at one of the guards. And the guard actually waves Harrison over and starts to walk away from the road with him. How far away? 10, 15 feet. I'm a DM. Harrison. Hey, Harrison. It's Sam. Is everything good? Well, I, you, you, you see the familiar... What? Right, this is in your head, Harrison. Sorry, this is Sam. He glances you good? Back. He glances back at you and taps the side of his nose. Right, don't make any gestures, Harrison. This is Sam. You can respond in your head. Let me know if you're good. It's. I, th I think it's going to be fine. And Can that, I do an insight check on that? Uh, sure. I don't know if I believe him. I don't think he believes him. Four. 
I got a four. He's are, fine. You, yeah, you are in agreement that neither of you knows if he's fine or not. Got it. And then he kind of starts to get very animated, and you can hear him shout, It was used in the defense of your members. You can't confiscate it. I've been... Absolutely not. I will not part with it. Hey, I'm a DM him again. Harrison? It's getting a little heated over there. You okay? Well, not now, you hear shouted back. I swear you can pry this from my cold, dead hands. And you watch as Harrison brandishes that flintlock pistol he had. Oh. Do I do something stupid? That's a stupid question, Molly. I, I was going to run over her. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Aveline is like stepping up. I was going to okay, say, okay, I'm going to DM the guard <laughs> and tell him to get lost, like leave him alone. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to say who I am. I'm not going to say why I'm in his head. I'm just going to say, leave him alone. The guard, the, the guard has a chance to look around confused. So we just, look, we just can't have those in here. Aveline walks up and just kind of puts a hand on Harrison's shoulder and says, that thing won't shoot even if you wanted it to. It's for display. He's an actor. He has a very long resume if you want to ask him about it. I suggest you don't. It does help you go to sleep, though. Well, go ahead. I was going to say, can I DM Harrison and at what, what is it they're trying to take from him? His pistol. Oh, I would like to magic tinkering a pistol and walk up and hand him the fake behind him. So that he can hand them a fake pistol. The dungeon master's not entirely sure how that's going to work. Uh, so he's going to process that while Aveline rolls me a perception, or not perception, uh, deception. This is where I'm like, which, okay, what, what, what edition are we using? What's the role now? Uh, it's the, the decept magical deception oh, or persuasion. You either one you want to use. Uh, I'll go with uh, a seventeen. Okay, Harrison. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. You see that that is the cause of the confusion. This this prop go, which does not function, is a very convincing replica. Not one that the Imperial troops would find any offense with. I guarantee if one should arrive in our beautiful little town, your beautiful little town, I guarantee they will find it to be non-functioning. And the guard and is, looks... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, is that when I can walk up and like from like behind him, like pass him the fake gun to hand to them. So it's non-functioning because yeah, uh, it's fake. Observe it. He spins it around his hand a couple of times awkwardly because it's not small um, and kind of passes it behind his back and pulls it out. Observe, you can see that there's, the flint is dull. The steel doesn't strike and you'll notice there's no borehole. Completely non-functional. And the guard looks at it for a second. Yeah, I'm still taking it. Fine. I suppose. If you must. He hikes up his coat. And you see him tuck. Smooth his coat out. The guard takes it and hands it off to, um, to the guy with the spear. Run this up to the forge. Have him melt it down. Rather severe. I'm just doing my job. No guns. Well, you know, that went through a conversion, so, you know, you might be able to graduate with it. Is that what they say? The no exceptions. We don't need the Imperial Army in here. 
are they curious about what you're doing? I haven't the faintest idea. I just don't need them coming in here and, and calling anyone away for for maintaining or using or training or possessing a slug thrower. A slug thrower? Oh, yes. You haven't... Now, this is where Sam will have a moment of, of like, bing... There is an uh, an imperial edict against gunpowder weapons. Right. Nothing. Uh, it does anything I use consider that or no? You know, here's the funny thing about being an inventor. Right. Sometimes your desire to see what else you can make gets ahead of your understanding of the legal consequences of making it. It's a gray area, if anything. Sure. We'll go with that. Okay. It's a gray area. I also am going to have to give you guys some more treasure so you can hire lawyers. Because that's... Uh... To be fair, there's probably some in here. <laughs> I'm just going to go around stealing all the stuff. You're just swiping it. It's fine. <laughs> so... So yeah, you um he hands it off and and he they again they reiterate that it's just they want to be able to make it very clear that they any time they have seen a powder gun or a slug thrower it has been destroyed. The last thing they need is having the empire coming in here and accusing them of violating these laws. That's how your neck gets three inches longer. And then after that exchange, Harrison's kind of like, you know, all right, well, that was unpleasant. We should find a place to have a drink. I believe it is right and proper for the officer to ensure that her enlisted are well-fed and well-watered. He turns. Your grace, if you would lead us on to a tavern. Your holiness of graceness, please lead us. I don't, I don't know if using your title is going to be a good idea in here. Yeah, well, maybe I'm sure we just, it'll be fine. Maybe we just cut it back to Aveline for right now. You know, uh, on the down low. Yeah, you know, the, the sneaky sneak, but with the words. Um, but I do agree, perhaps a drink to hear what's going on in town and maybe stop and think for a moment is not a bad idea. And I definitely need a drink. So let's go. <laughs> the, the guard with the, the blade, as he finishes his paperwork, like, well, you know, there are places you can stop. We have rebuilt some of the, we've re rebuilt and refurbished some of the original establishments that once were part of the Arbor van. There's a, a tavern with, I believe, rooms to let. Not far up. If you go past, well, past the bright orange ruin. And then there's the bright yellow ruin on the left. And then you'll see a few row houses. At the end of that, there is an establishment. Not the one that's completely overgrown with ivy. The one next to it. All right. Don't go in the one overgrown with ivy. No one goes in that one. Why not? because those that have haven't come out well that sounds like a very fun time so that it sounds really like does. a great place to put next to a tavern <laughs> excellent place for the middle of your town <laughs> well we're all fairly certain that that whatever lives there has been satiated for at least the time being oh didn't we have one of those as well yeah, we yeah, have, yeah, we did. Yeah. We left it. We never got to go we in. Just, I'm no. still so He's sad. Fine. We didn't go in there. He's fine. We'll get to him. He's well, not going anywhere. Did the DM just take a plot hook and pick it up from one spot and move it somewhere else? Nah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it multitasks this plot hook. What what time of day is it by it's now? It's actually coming on to post dinner. Oh, I'm starved. Let's go to the tavern. Maybe we could play like a dice or card game and swindle some money from these people. 
<laughs> we will need to somehow pay for our stuff, so. Yeah, I, I don't think I have any money, so I'm going to have to figure you, out something you out. Have, have pot, some money. You have enough coin to pay for a, a room or two for the night and some food. Okay. I have some. There's, you I, have, some of us might have to sleep on the floor of the room. You have money to afford that. just bets. get one room. Wait, how does... Katie has... Katie is rolling in gold right now, and I don't know how. <laughs> She's got like 22k, bro. I, Thank I you, my kid. What? <laughs> she has that. How is Kenzie just driving out Kenzie out here? Like, <laughs> what? Mackenzie's like, I'm gonna forge something good. <laughs> I was just I literally over and I was like, gold to my name. <laughs> I have eight gold. I think I made it so I've like silver. literally zero. I've not changed any of that. I've not touched <laughs> any of the gold stuff. That is oh, I have 40. Oh, wait. I think I got money from when I ch exchanged my bills. I don't I'll have to investigate I can change that. it. I, I can change it. I don't think that's the right amount, but you definitely have enough so. to rent a couple of rooms with enough beds for all of you. Um, I love the concept that Katie Harrison and Adeline have will... a lot more money than Sam and I. We're secretly rolling, you know? As, as you're coming up and you're talking with the proprietor, Harrison will very casually point out that it's it's it would be terribly inappropriate for him to share a room with any of you fine ladies. Um, I do agree with that. And, and thus, uh, he's perfectly comfortable if you want to get him his own room. If we want to get him his own room. And uh, I'm going to need you to roll me a... Uh... That corner booth Can I looks roll mighty comfortable, check? Harrison. I would like to do an I, intimidation. No, I, I would much prefer for Aveline okay. to roll me a wisdom Can save. Can you stand behind me? Wisdom save? Yep. I don't got the... What? Nine. And and that is absolutely reasonable that you should get him his own separate room. Save his gun. I'm Was sorry. magic involved with this? No, he's just a really smooth talker. Oh. I have a soft spot for him now. And, and I'll be it. honest, I have never made you guys roll a save against a role play situation. And darn it, I'm whipping that out now. <laughs> yeah, on my <laughs> plus zero <laughs> wisdom. It's not my fault. That's not your good one. Or that he picked up on it. <laughs> Fair. Aveline, yeah, we'll take care of his room, buy him dinner, or whatever. Oh no, he'll he'll he has. Oh no no, he has theatrics. He's good on food. Okay, good. Um, as you're having an opportunity to um, to eat, uh, you will actually find yourself approached by someone that that you have not yet recognized. Um, they are a member of the infinite divergence as noted by the armband uh, but they'll see where you're, you're eating as harrison's off regaling everyone about this tale of these these doomed soldiers fighting to the last man against a pack of saber-toothed tigers that had been magicked into existence by those of a resistance a wicked resistance evil people and he has a story of nobility and strength Every once in a while, kind of a jab at just how horrible they are. He's actually pretty good at what he does. Because you know who the bad guys in the story are. But he's got it pretty well layered in there. Um, the person will come up and introduce themselves. Um, and the first thing they say is that we, we understand that you've, uh, you were asking a great number of questions about, about our community. Right, I believe I can pass your test. Truly, you feel you're, you're interested in joining the Infinite Divergence. Not necessarily interested, I just think I can pass your test. Oh, that's, I suppose, useful. But to, are you, do you wish to take the test? To prove that I can pass it, yes. Ex well, the, see, the, that... Unfortunately, you'll first have to become initiated to that end. And what does initiation mean? Well, we study artifacts from divergences. So we would need a specimen from a recent convergence event to, to study. And what do you define as studying? Vivisection, usually. I'm sorry, what was that word? 
take them apart. Right. Analyze the, the tissues, the fluids, the bloods. Right. Well, I have none of that. Hmm. I have... Well, wait. Would... <sighs> Is JB in any way, shape, or form from a, co a convergence? Or would he be completely made of parts from Prime? He has convergence parts in him, if for no other reason than simply the, you know, he's here and very few things where you are are unique to this universe. Okay. So, yeah, he has some parts that probably came through that you've turned, you've repurposed. Well, then I will, I'll gesture to JB and just say, like, he is, I mean, he has convergence parts and he's working, clearly. Well, but... But generally, we ask for something more recent and specific. Can you identify what on him has recently come through in order sure. to, to check it for the and residues I, of, a, of a convergence? And I pop his panel open and start speaking terminology of all of his working parts. Oh, fascinating. Um, I, I generally follow. How, how, how dated are these? When was JB created? Um... You tell me, DM, how many how many days has it been since we got to level two? <laughs> uh, this incarnation of JB is about a week old. Okay, a week. Oh, and all the parts came through an event at that time? Uh, estimated roughly like 75% parts. Had just come through a convergence? Have been through a convergence, oh. yes. Oh, well, like, for example, that particular thing there how old is it in terms of reality prime see this know. is the challenge we need to have a we need to know of an event so that we can map any residual effects from the event to a particular point in time well then i'm not interested in your cult anymore because it's become boring how old do you need it to be well as Part. long as we can pinpoint the exact day or hour ideally we can then map it from that point. Are, are you familiar with an event, perhaps, that we could pinpoint thus? I mean, there was an event filled with dinosaurs not too far from here. Well, thus, see, there's an opportunity. But I'm not going to go get you a dinosaur. Therefore, I am no longer interested. What is the benefit of taking this test? The people we talked to before didn't really know. Well, I'm afraid I can't share much of the details of the studies done by the, the graduates or the, the grand cum laude. But if you want people to take the test, don't you want there to be incentive? But, uh, She's the most brilliant mind you're going to find. I, and I'm quite certain that she is, but there are protocols. Well, that's fine. I don't need to take your test. I know I'm smarter than any grand wizard or whatever you've got going on up in there. That's... I just wanted to prove it to you, but obviously it's well, too much of a hassle. Well, and that's, that's more than fair. If you don't wish to join, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Do people who pass this test get access everywhere? Well, well that's part of the process once you've proven that you are a graduate absolutely that's who Wait, does so we can't even go in the building well we can't let anyone in we need to know there's certain academic prowess <sighs> okay i have on me two ice sacks from a dragon fascinating when did it come through an event no 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 i am only going to give you one excellent the question still stands uh do i could i date when this came through a convergence it may have even been born here for all you know mm. I'm not sure about then i don't know but it's not from this prime how how much of a subject do you need? Oh, we need the full subject. No. I'm just going to look at Aveline and just say no. No. 
Oh, oh gosh, no. Well, if it was like you know, I mean, I appreciate a, a finger. I not, appreciate no, Donny one's body toe. for science, but this is this is not something we do here. Well, we you don't really know you, what you do. <laughs> yeah, you said that you needed something to dissect to study these events. No. Well, yeah. Are you saying we have to go get a dinosaur and bring it back, or you won't be happy? Another one. We've already defeated a couple. What about of the ones that were killed? Could we just go get the ones we felled on the battlefield and bring them, or do they have to be alive? Oh, alive would be much. Oh. Yeah, uh, it'd be better, sure, but does it have to? I suppose not, but I will okay, say, then... if if we could tell, if we could, I would be willing to speak directly to the Gram Kun Laude to share that you had brought a live specimen for study, and I, I'm certain that would also expedite your elevation within <sighs> the Grand Divergence. Well, I'm going to leave it to the Duchess. Yeah, Evelyn just turns to Katie yeah. and says, Duchess, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Katie is Katie. going to glare so hard. <laughs> Katie, I did not know that you too were a duchess. I have been in the presence of royalty this whole time. Now I do not have the hat. Katie, we have lived together and you have only just now told me you are a duchess. Apparently I've been lying to you this entire time. I I feel a little bit hurt. Well, I'm sure that we shall mend your feelings later. Um, your majesty. <laughs> She's just, what do we have in front of us at this point? Like, do we have food? Yes. Or like... Absolutely. She is definitely going to, like, pick a pea off of her plate or something and flick it straight at Sam. <laughs> Just whatever. Whatever projectile, small projectile, um, and flick it at Sam. Given the where we are, I'm, I'm going to call. You all have some decision making between now and next Monday to do. Yeah. How do you want to go about this? You've got an opportunity to, you're in the right spot. Rather than me winging it for 15 minutes, figuring out what you want to do and helping you find it, I feel like this is a good spot to, since you don't seem to be chomping at the bit to go kill yourself an Allosaurus or two, I'm going to, I was wondering if we were going to like cliffhanger on you saying out to go kill yourselves a, a T-Rex. I think that's a decision y'all need to make on your own by Monday. So I'm thinking we're going to call a night here. The players are going to take some time to muse over what they want to do next. I want to model a certain DMing style of sandboxing where you're like, well, here are the, some options. What do you want to do? Um, and then do me the honor of giving me a couple of days to prep whatever y'all pick. So, so that's where we're, I think that's a good spot to wrap for the night. Um, and we can kind of build from there. How's that? How does that hit everyone on the stream? I love it. I love it. And I also, I have to. I, I before we do anything else, I have to thank Pond for for wholeheartedly diving in on the Harrison dialogue and exchanges, coupled with the oh my gosh, that's right, he knows I'm an officer in an army, and nobody else does. Like that, I think I'll get my star out of the way now. That was my star of the night, was watching all of that unfold. Not anymore, Sir Lady Majesty <laughs> Duchess of the Grand Sword. <laughs> Which was a lot of fun. get that whole title on a t-shirt. And the fancy hat. Don't forget the title of the fancy hat. Um, exactly. And as we're in there wind down, before we get to our, our stars for everybody in the night, I do want to also take a moment. Um, and before we talk sponsors, I want to offer congratulations to Mr. Happy. And Mrs. Happy on the, um, they're expecting of a little one also named Harrison. Um, Harrison in this game is named after a very similar character who appears in the, the novel Killer Angels by Michael Shara about the Battle of Gettysburg. And he is one of my favorite characters in the movie and in the book, an actor turned spy soldier, um, which I think is just a really neat, it's well played. It's a neat character. It's a lot of fun. Um, Lots do May 4th. 
Wow. It's a shame they never actually land on their due dates unless you plan it. But good, oh, fingers crossed that that was how it works out. But plus, you can always tell them we were expecting you on, on Star Wars Day. So that's a lot of the kind of fun that goes with that. So and then, of course, we really should also um, thank everybody whose name is on that list, because those are the people that helped get the stream up and running and made sure we were good to go and had everything covered. Um, and their support through our Kickstarter was immense and generous and awesome and mind blowing. I mean, we have a theme song because of our Kickstarter backers. I just, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that we have a theme song. Um, so there's that as well. Um, and before I do too many more of those, those shout outs and thanks, let's do a round of the table um, about who we are, who we were, where to find us and what, anything fun coming up you want to share and then what your star of the night is from the game. And we're going to go, let's, let's just loop the table the way we did before. So we'll kick it off again with NLK. All right. Well, my name is Nightlight Night or NLK. You can find me here on Twitch. Uh, but tonight I played Katazar or Katie, the half orc cleric. Um, and I think, I mean, I think for me, the star of the night is definitely the naming of Aveline. Like, um, the, just the title of Aveline is 100%. Um, but I thought we had really, really great role playing. I loved hearing Harrison and um, Aveline talk. And um, just even like the whole like Allosaurus, like, what do we do? It was just really fun. It was a great time. Awesome. Tiffany? Yeah, I knew I was next. I still wasn't prepared. Hi, I'm Tiffany, or TS, and I played Sim. And uh, it's kind of hard to figure out the start of the night, but I'm going to have to go with, I think, the naming and Katie trying to curtsy was pretty good. Although having them freak Sim out about sending her dinosaur to certain death was pretty funny, too. So, <laughs> like, that's just how I'm paranoid. But the role playing was awesome, and and Harrison and and Aveline together was good. But I kind of want to give a shout out to Sam, like hiding behind JB to make fake armbands. So, uh, so many. So, um, I'll be here on Saturday for uh, Candle Keep. So, so you can find me. Yay, Candle Keep! All right, Yay. Pond. Hi everyone, I'm That Other Pond. You can find me at my channel, That Other Pond, but uh, where you'll see me next is actually um, back here on Saturday morning um, to just make Lantern's Life a living hell. Uh, in the best way possible though, it's gonna be a good time. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great, it's great. Um, and um, I play Aveline, the human fighter, and my star of the night. This is just so, all of it was so good. Yeah, I really love the role play getting into it and just so much laughs. I think probably my star of the night was um, specifically, it, it's an in-character and out-of-character moment where um, Tiff had, was or Sib was trying to figure out a way to like talk to Fukan, but then realized that she had speak with animals, but then used to speak with animals on the T-Rex thing. <laughs> it was like over there. And just the the thought that went behind everyone just like completely, like clearly this encounter was built out and we we're gonna fight this dinosaur. And we we're just like, no. Nope. <laughs> It was like the perfect distraction. But before we get, oh no, I'll let Molly go before I share where, what my thought is on that. Uh, Molly, you're up. Oh, I'm barely Molly. I played Sam Metal, um, the gnome artificer, and I think my star of the night is finally getting. I've been scrubbing through my notes. We did not know the name Juniper. We just knew you had a bow back home. We did not know her name was Juniper, which is the sweetest of names. And I literally wrote it enough to cover like three squares of, of Juniper. I love it. I love finding out more about backstory. And also the uterus um, logo was the star of the night for me too. Truly, mwah, I may need to become the new cum laude of the uterus logo. 
So that was my star of the night for sure, was lots of good RP backstories and the symbol. Solid. Now, I'll be honest, um, I was expecting a car chase with the Allosaurus. Like, I was like, okay, this will be kind of cool. All this really quick throw things on the map, and, the, and they can just try to outpace it and trip it up and and lots of good stuff. And then y'all were like, yep, nope. Because then it was like, well, maybe we can outrun it. Or maybe we can fight it. I'm like, well, you can fight it. I don't mind to kill in it. You might be able to kill it, maybe. Mm. Um, but sure, let's try. Why not? Um, and then I was just mad props to all of you for just really figuring out how to completely diffuse that. And redirect it. So that was really kind of exciting and fun for me. Um, it's harder on stream than it is in person to recalibrate when your PCs surprise you. Because I can't afford the five minutes of dead air to go, okay, look, I need pizza. I need to recalibrate. Uh, Y'all figure out what's going on. Someone, play, someone take out Flux and play a quick round while I sort this out. Um, so... Um, but yeah, I was really impressed by that. And then for me, um, I am back here. I think I actually have tomorrow and Friday off, which will be weird. This will be the, tomorrow will be the first day since, uh, before midwinter break where I'm not streaming. So I'll be back on Saturday because yes, I have two D and D games running on Saturday. We have, uh, the, the bitter victory, which I would like to rename to the fiddlers do, um, in the morning, which is our pirate game. And then we're meeting at noon Eastern time for possibly the last installment of a candle keep adventure that we've been working our way through month by month. So a lot of fun for that. So it's high. Yes. Six hours of Dungeons and Dragons here at Lantern Noir presents. So thank you to everyone for being out here tonight. We're going to figure out where to send you as we wrap this up. And while I'm doing that, I'll also mention a big thank you to everyone that followed everyone that joined um, and became part of our community. It was it's awesome to have you with us. Um, and it means a lot that you you dedicated some time to, to be here with us this evening. Uh, let's see who we can find to send you off to chill with. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum -bum -bum. I'm skimming down and I'm looking and looking. And I think we're going to... Oh, wait. How long has he been on? He's probably close to being done. One of the nice things about raiding into the Hermit is he's on the West Coast, which means I know when we wrap up here on the generally East Coast, there's still a lot of game left on his side of things where I think we're going to ship you his way. Unless someone has another recommendation for where to go, that's our plan. So we'll ship you over there. Tell him hi on our behalf. If I can type his name right. As he continues to work his way through the Legend of Zelda. And we'll see you all there. Thanks for coming out tonight, folks. Thank you to everyone whose name's about to pop up here for the follows, the subs, the cheers, and of course our Patreons. We'll see you all next time. And until then, please, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, tip your wait staff well. They deserve it. And if you're getting your own drinks, the advice still applies. Stay safe.